Greetings, wayward travelers, and welcome to the Acrium Expeditions. Come on in, take a seat. I'm your Dungeon Master, Logan Hanley, here to spin you and the adventurers that you see before you a yarn through the lands of Ecrium. Before we get started, first of all, thank you to the amazing Parent Hope Springer, singer, Hope Singer, uh, for the ambiance right now. But uh, we got a couple shout outs and sponsor things to go through. Uh, so, first and foremost, um, let's hit up with our. Yeah, shout outs. Uh, first of all, Brianna Flame, who made all of the ama amazing overlays that you guys will see here today, as well as uh, some of, some you may see in the future. Um, she is an amazingly talented creator, both uh, from a TTRPG perspective, but also with video and photography as well, So if you and graphic design, as you can see. So if you need any of that, uh, follow her, hit her up. Uh, she, I don't want to speak for her, but I'm sure she's more than happy to work with y'all. Um, next, Esoteric, the amazing cartographer for the lands of Ecrium that you can see behind me, uh, and maps that I may be using in the future, uh, either on here or on other streams, um, does an amazing job, so hit up Esoteric if you are looking for any cartography for your world. Um, next, Del Barovic, who is the amazing artist for the, and I can go like this and point down because it's, I know it's always below me, uh, but the amazing art that you guys will see below me and across from our players, um, Del does an amazing job, is incredible to work with. Uh, so if you're looking for character art, whether it's for yourself or for a campaign or whatever, uh, hit up Del. And then last but not least, Adrian von Zeigler who is the amazing composer of all the ambiance uh, music that we have uh, here on stream. Uh, so if you are looking for an amazing compendium of over like 400-ish songs uh, that are very, all of them very fantasy related, AVZ is your guy. Uh, next, on to our sponsors. Uh, first and foremost, Dragon Rock RPG Design, Daniel Lieberman, uh, Renee Beauregard, two amazing, amazing content creators who bring a unique and creative, or who bring unique and creative content to the TTRPG community. Um, whether they're uh, writing it for their own stuff um, or you know helping out people like Jay Casual with his deep breath, um, they have tons and tons of stuff. Uh, that you guys can look at, and I believe, I don't want to speak for Perrin, but, or Renee, but there may be some stuff coming out in the future, I thought I heard, uh, and I'll let you speak about that more, but if you're a content creator, if you're a dungeon master who wants homebrew subclasses or races for your world, hit up Dragon Rock RPG Design, they are amazing at what they do, uh, and yeah. Next, Umbral Oculus Dice, um, the amazing Terran Hackett, uh, bringing dice from beyond the veil to your tables uh she makes amazing amazing hand poured polished artisan dice uh so if you're looking for them and we will be giving away a set of dice uh they are in do you have them with you Ooh, they're in that bag but yeah she makes amazing dice uh i need to ooh, i need to activate that i will activate that in a second um but in a hot minute you'll type the word converge uh, into, ooh, those are the dice, into the chat uh, in order to win, or in order to enter to win uh, those dice. And then last but not least, the Initiative Order. They're a collective of passionate teaching RPG players and creators that want to help the community thrive and grow. Their main goal is to explore and experience all types of gaming systems while creating an inclusive community for all players uh, and viewers. So if you are new to the TTRPG community, want to join community games, or just want to like kind of connect with your fellow uh, tabletop nerds, uh, head over to TO uh, and check them out. Uh, and then last but not least, if you want to support uh, the channel, if you want to support these amazing, amazing players that I have at my table here, um, please consider donating uh, down at the, my Streamlabs link or, you know, th throwing in uh, subs for the channel. They all go, uh, everything gets split between myself and the players, and uh, it goes to furthering the campaign and our looks and projects and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, if you're feeling generous, feel free. Um, all right. 
without further ado, let's uh, get into the Ekrim Expedition, folks. As we have a special, special introduction for you from our friends, uh, Danny Laid of the Initiative Order. So I'm going to mute us really quick so we don't have to hear it ourselves, and then we're going to go for it. We are back. Uh, two things that I forgot. First of all, thank you, Mr. Bra, for the bits, as always. What up, Del? Um, enter Converge, just the word Converge, into chat for your chance at um Umbral Oculus Die. They are now active. Uh, you could do Converge with the lowercase c. Try that. I don't know if that works. Let me know. We'll see. I'll double check. But while we're doing that, oh no, is it not working? I'll double check that. But we're going to go around the table and do character introductions while I'm doing some maintenance. So we're going to start with the amazing Taryn Hackett. Oh, hi, Taryn Hackett, also known as Val Rook across the socials. I am a generally creative human, a TTRPG performer, and GM over on the Initiative Order, where I lead a group of lost souls through a homebrew cult divinity lost campaign where they are currently having reality torn asunder before them and it's everything i could have hoped for uh beyond that i am the creative behind umbral oculus dice where i i hand pour and polish all of the dice myself and i love doing it if you want to follow me uh specifically in my dice ventures that's uo underscore dice on instagram and there is a link in the bio for my active shop and my merchandise uh next uh utahime Please Hi guys, um, I'm Utahime, I'm a cosplayer and streamer and TTRPG performer, um, so you can catch me on the social of the medias at Utahime Cosplay on Facebook, Instagram, here on Twitch where I occasionally stream a variety of games and Brianna DaCosta on Twitter. That's me. Alright, next, Mr. Ronan Fox. Oh, what's up? Uh, I'm Ronan Fox. Uh, you can find me on the socials at Ronan Fox. Uh, that's F A W K S. Uh, D and D content creator on Twitch, starting back in October, and TTRPG performer. I am in the said reality bending show that uh, Taryn just mentioned, and and on this, um, yeah, that's me. Uh, Mr. Eddie Gilbert. Oh goodness, we're on B. Hi everyone, I'm Eddie, your local Discount Bard. You can find me on all the various social medias at Discount Bard. I'm a TTRPG player, a streamer, actor, performer, content creator, overall real-life jack-of-all-trades, master of none, and here to have a wonderful, absolutely fun time. Uh, you can usually find me on Twitch as your resident local pirate, although it appears that I'm going to have to pass that role on to my good friend Perrin here with that lovely background he's got going on at the moment. Uh, but yeah, another just overall creative human. I mostly do uh, video game streaming these days, but I also do TTRPG streams where I bounce around various channels like this one. I'm super excited to be actually in a full campaign again. And as you can tell, I am just an overall hyper mood today. So I'm here to have a blast. Let's have some fun. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, Renee Beauregard. 
Hello. Uh, it's lovely for all of you to be here this evening. Thank you all for joining us on our premiere episode of the Ecorealm Expeditions. Uh, it is my humble pleasure uh, to be your bard for this campaign. I will be singing all of the hits uh, as much as possible uh, or for whatever ones that I can learn on my ukulele. Um, uh, so my name is Renee Beauregard. You can find me at Dragon Rock RPG on Twitter and at Dragon Rock RPG Design on Instagram where you can find me and my best friend, Daniel Lieberman, creating homebrew 5e elements for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, we're going to be putting out something very soon. Um, so keep your eyes out on our social media for that, uh, for announcements to come. Uh, other than that, uh, I also uh, may or may not have uh, composed that lead-in for the uh, video we had this evening. I'm very it's proud so of it. Good. Thank you all uh, again for coming out, and I look forward to this wonderful campaign. Uh, Mr. Logan Hanley, please take away this microphone. Yes, uh, and I am Logan Hanley, your friendly internet dungeon master here to start this adventure. Okay, I finally got it to work. Type in Converge into chat for a chance to win a set of Umbral Oculus Dice because that's a, that I got it to work now. Computers are hard. Uh, I'm also really nervous. Um, but let us begin. <clears throat> Welcome to the lands of Ecrium. Our story begins in the heart of the lands of Ecrium on the content of Cantor, a land tracing back to the very founding of mortal beings, a continent involved and developed by mortal hands under the watchful eyes of the gods paramount. Millennia and eras have seen the rise and fall of, uh, falls of kingdoms and the peoples of Cantor slowly integrating and learning from one another. However, our adventure doesn't start at the dawning of this world or the immediate eras that followed, but in the year 371 of the Age of the Red Dawn, a new age, a new era for the history of Ekrim. Millennia and eras have passed. Kingdoms and civilizations rose, fell, then rose again. And through the persistence of mortals, Cantor has mostly thrived. Our story begins in the city of Swega, a dilapidated city built on the remnants of the Taka Dominion. During the last couple of decades, Swega has turned from being a shanty town of little standing or growth or import um, on the continent of Cantor to a diverse and thriving port city with access to the sea and many of the chief civilizations in central Cantor. It has become a city of traders and travelers, and for many, a city of new beginnings. Our story, our new beginning, starts on a cloudy Jandis day, fog covering much of the mud-slicked streets and the faintest trickle of rain coming down on the rooftops of the city. We step into a tavern known only for its reputation, for being one of the dirtiest, stinkiest, stickiest, small, salt-smelliest places in all of Cantor. Lay imite. As we enter, heading past the few patrons currently in the tavern, we go upstairs to a storage closet. A storage closet currently functioning as a sleeping quarters of sorts for a grizzled and disheveled human. Slightly sleep deprived, with a calculating look on their face, Ronan, would you please introduce your character to us? Uh, yes, holy crap, it's happening. Um, so <laughs> what you see uh, sitting on the bed is uh, a about six foot three, six foot four slender um, little little on the this side of gaunt, uh, almost there, not quite. Um, pale skin. He's got sort of dark uh, reddish eyes um, and uh, shoulder length. Uh, black hair that's kind of pulled back but kind of messy still just from the wear and tear of the road and he is wearing robes that he's been wearing for god knows how long that are uh, generally gray and black colors he, he almost from afar he looks like a uh, sort of walking black and white photo and he would be sitting on the bed i'm assuming this is morning correct 
Correct. Uh, dawn has risen for maybe about three-ish hours now. It's about ten o'clock. Okay, so he, uh, so basically when I get up, uh, I will do the same thing I do every morning and uh, quickly write down uh, notes from any visions and or uh, connections that I can try to make. So I will be sitting there scribbling feverishly for the first probably 20 minutes or so that I'm awake. Okay. Uh, you take the time to do that part as your part of your morning ritual. Um, I'd say the one thing that for certain that you can pull from this vision um, is in particular that you're close to what you'd remember to be your home. What I would know to be my home? Is that what you said? Your home, correct. Okay. Okay. Um, I will close the book. Uh, I don't have any possessions other than what I'm carrying. I do have um, a large uh, staff that is made of stone, uh, it's sort of almost like carved stone, and it has uh, sort of purple style crystals at the top. Um, looking out, so I will strap that to my back. Uh, I will pat my legs <laughs> to make sure each one of my books are there. So if you see him, you see that he has pants and has uh, a set of double holsters on each leg, and so there are four books attached to each leg. So he will make sure that those are there, and he will and will go to the to the bar. As you head downstairs, uh, again, you're really only in like a like you're sleeping with mops and stuff. Um, sure. it's, you're, they don't really have rooms to stay in at Les Mute, Uh But uh, as you head downstairs, you see uh, a few individuals. You can see Keth and Haku. Uh, Keth, uh, male half orc with this very very dark olive color skin, uh, braids that go down about halfway down their back, uh, and then Haku, a uh, female hobgoblin. Uh, who has similar braids, but they only go to about shoulder length, and then she has mutton chops uh, that are also braided down to, like, the top of her chest. Um, the two of them have been your companions of sorts, uh, drinking and telling stories for the past several days, and as you come down, uh, Haku looks at you and says, uh, Professor, come, come, uh, the, uh, slop, I guess is the best thing to call this, is, uh, it's still warm. If you want some. Um, sure. And I will, as I approach, I'm going to just take a quick parameter search with my eyes just to see what I see, if anybody's different that I'm not recognizing or any changes since I've slept. Yeah, so um, you see... Go ahead and... Yeah, no, I'm not going to make you a perception check. Okay. You don't need to do that. But no, you see Kaya uh, behind the bar. Um as always um, and then additionally you see two people that don't look super familiar uh, you see a goblin sitting in the corner and then you see a female uh, that looks to you to be an elf of sorts uh, in the tavern as well uh, both kind of just sitting and there are a couple other patrons as well but those two are the ones that stand out the most to you uh, and as you go to sit down with uh, Haku and Keth Keth looks at you and says we, we uh, have some, there's some new folk here. I, no, I noticed. There's, they've been, they've been asking all, some questions, kind of like you. What, what kind of questions? Uh, work, what this place is. Um, the goblin was saying that this is a real shithole, which is kind of true. Needs some fiction yes, up. It is, it is. Um. I mean, no, nothing, I mean, unusual for, for new folk, but not necessarily unusual for people from around here. Can you tell they're not from around here? Uh, no. I mean, there's a lot of strange people. I mean, this is a... They just seem like it. Uh, you know what, now that you say it, they probably just they probably just stumbled in here because they didn't know that this was a shitty place, but... That's how I want you back here. Uh, 
you know, um, I'm not very, very perceptive in these things. You're, you're calling me out, Professor, as always. Um, I should not assume that every strange person that walks in this tavern is, is, is new to here. You're, you're right. Assumptions aren't even. Mm. And then I'll turn to Kaya and just kind of motion that I'll take a, a bolt. Yeah, right, right away. Um, and she brings uh, a little platter for you with a bowl, and like inside is like a really, really oily like biscuits and gravy. Uh, it's just it's just whatever they had thrown into a, a pot and simmered for a little bit, and then put into a bowl. Um, would, would you uh, would you like any uh, salt, pepper, anything like that? Oh. No, this is this is perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Kaya, who I forgot to identify, is also a half orc as well, and she uh, leaves the stuff for you and then goes back to tending the bar, pouring some drinks for some of the morning customers. Uh, but at this time, while we're sitting here, I'm going to have in order Art and then Eden introduce their characters to us, please. So Art is a uh, small, gangly. Hang on, can you be small and gangly at the same time? I don't care, it's canon now. Uh, either way, uh, a little three foot six uh, creature who is practically all skin and bone, even though he clearly eats way more than someone his size should rightly be able to consume. Uh, green skin, long pointy ears, long pointy nose, uh, yellow eyes, and just an insatiable look of curiosity on his face at all times. Constantly seems to be working on some sort of a project. Uh, his clothes appear to be primarily hand-me-down, uh, has wraps around his feet that almost look more like bandages than any sort of actual proper footwear, uh, pants that seem to have rips in them. The only real nice article of clothing that he seems to have on his person is a long blue, well, long for his size, long blue uh, trench coat that has an assortment of different pockets that look like they did not come originally with the coat. They were likely sewn in haphazardly after the fact, and a rather nice pair of telescoping goggles that he wears upon his head. He is covered with a thin layer of soot that appears to be practically embedded into his skin. It seems like no matter how many times he bathes, if he bathes, it would ever come off. And he's currently at the table trying to get the attention of anyone who would pay attention to this small little goblin trying to make an order. Uh, and as I will, I will say, as she drops off, as Kaya drops off the food to hell, she notices you and comes over. Uh, uh, hi, little one. Uh, having, how, how can I help you? Hi. Um, so if, if, if it's at all possible, could you possibly give me a, what is the strongest uh, proof drink that you have here? Something that's, that's really, really alcoholic. Who? Um, probably the Mustang Rum would probably be our highest. Well, it depends. There's a couple of different variants of it, but there's one that's that's pretty high up there. It's about 190 proof, I think. Ooh, wow, that'll do quite nicely. Yes, uh, could I please get, uh, let's see, one, two, three, uh, two of those, please. Two bottles? Two, two glasses, two oh, drinks with how, it mixed in. What? what how much is it? a whole bottle? Uh, for a, uh, a shot, um, it'll be about uh, two silver pieces. For a whole bottle, will be two gold. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Here, here's the, here you go. And uh, Art will happily put uh, two gold pieces on the table. Oh, um, and do you have any food? Food would be great. Yeah, so we have um, the house uh, breakfast special, which is the only thing we have. Um, it's just some sausage and gravy and a couple, like, biscuits or bread to go with it. The bread's a couple days old. Perfect. That'll do great. Awesome. Uh, and she just kind of nods and walks back behind the bar, starts getting your stuff ready. As that's happening, uh, Taryn, would you like to introduce your character to us, please? Yes. So, Eden is probably about five five kind of a slender but kind of semi curvaceous build um it looks like honestly she's one of those people she looks like she's a vegan uh just very lean um and she's got kind of dusty pink hair uh she has two uh briar thorn and rose uh 
vines growing out of the back of her head and coming forward kind of like a flower crown and she has two fuzzy pink moth antenna her ears do have notable notches uh, at the points of them at the end and um <laughs> she she her skin has a little bit of a rosy complexion um a little bit more than would be natural but not so much so that it's super apparent um and as far as clothing goes it's kind of whimsical in feel uh her like uh lace up vest jacket uh is reminiscent of moth wings um and of course she is notably barefoot because that's the only way to be um and currently she probably has her feet like up in her chair and is like sitting there kind of like a little kid at the table just like looking around and kind of fidgeting she keeps touching the bar table and making little twigs grow out of it at the top so currently there's like a miniature forest like just literally little teeny trees like all in front of her uh, just sprouting up and then they'll bloom uh so she just has this little forest that she's uh growing in front of her awesome awesome um as you're sitting there doing that the the one thing you kind of look up for a second um as you hear some like thuds coming from upstairs uh go back just a tiny bit uh to see this human coming down long hair grizzled beard um you could swear that if that human was bald it was you could you have a good idea of who that person is so he got a wig after he was shamed. Hmm. And she's just kind of sitting there and then she's like hiding behind her little forest a little bit to where like her eyes and everything is just above them and she is watching <laughs> Hale <laughs> go over <laughs> to the bar. Um, she is closely watching to see if he does, in fact, have sharp, pointy teeth, like humans have. Um, I'm guessing when you go sit, do you go sit with your, uh, Hale, hey, oh, do you go and sit with your, like, face facing everybody, or do you sit with your back to the room? Oh, no, he faces, uh, I will face everybody. Okay. Everybody that I can possibly face. Yeah. So you, you watch Hale as he goes and sits down with this, uh, what you've come to find out to be a half orc and a hobgoblin, uh, through your your different kind of explorations and investigations, um, facing you. Go ahead and give me a perception check, Eden. Okay, I was yes. like, wait. <laughs> okay. Need to clarify. There's yes. more than one of you now. There are. Um, Fifteen plus a bunch, because my perception is pretty high. That's good yeah. for sure. Oh. I know. Thank you, um, Umbral Oculus. <laughs> uh, that is a 21. A 21. Um, with a 21, you can see that uh, this human does not have teeth, or have, or has, he has teeth. I'm not making it canon that Hale doesn't have teeth. Um, you can see that this human does not have the pointy teeth that you are used to from humans. Yeah, so if you look at all in Eden's direction, she is staring at you from just above tiny trees on a table. Yeah, do I get the do I get the paranoid vibe that somebody is just watching me? If you look over, you see Eden doing this. Like at you. <laughs> There's no if heads or buts. She's not being stealthy about this. That is out the window. <laughs> so I will uh, I'll stand up. I'll take my bowl, which I haven't touched at all. Um, I'll make note of the goblin again just to see what he's doing mm -hmm. as I walk over to the person staring at me. Yeah, as you're walking. Slinks. Oh, good. As you're walking. Table, it's oh, right there. Good. Um, as you're walking by, Kaya walks past you, a platter with the same kind of slop that she had given you, Hale. On the other hand, a full bottle of Mustang rum. Um, and she just walks over to the goblin and hands it down. The The bread is really kind of crusty and old. Um, more than a couple days from what you can tell. It's got a little bit of mold on it. Um, and this just looks like the greasiest 
bowl of gravy uh, and butter and and sausage um, with no like additional flavoring of any kind whatsoever uh, that you've probably ever seen. Noted. And I'll go over to uh, the table with the elf. I'll put the bowl down. No one's so, here. You look confused and half starved and definitely not from around here. What? That's not true. If she like sits up and is like, that's not <clears throat> that's not true. I'm especially tough from around here. Do you know what this place is called? Um, really stinky bar place. I hate it here. Yeah, that's what I thought. What, why, why are you staring at me? I wasn't staring. <sighs> you were. I thought you had pointy teeth, but I can see that you don't. So that means you're not a human, which is good, because they're really evil and really bad, apparently. And so I wanted to make sure that you weren't going to try to kill me. It's a, it's a lot to unpack. Uh, for starters, I, I am I am human. But I do not want to kill you unless you mean me harm. You're not still mad about the arm wrestling thing? Nope. When did you get hair? Does it grow that fast for humans, or is that, like, magic? Have we met before? Maybe it was a dream. I don't know. Here, let me see something. And she reaches over and she just pokes him in the forehead. She's like, okay, now you feel real. And then she just, like, bites her shoulder. Nope, I'm not sleeping. Okay. Um. Well. Okay, well, you're not a... A threat to me at least um no i um so is this a place where like if friends say they're gonna help you like they will come and they'll meet you here no one would ever want to meet here on purpose really that's not good because i met two friends and then they said they would help me and that they would find me and so i if i gave them gold and so i gave them a little bit of gold stuff because i don't care about that and then they said they would help me but i don't know how they're gonna find me do you know what a con is mm, no is it like a human no, no not cons aren't humans but humans are Never mind. Uh, for now, if you don't have anybody here, to, to, why don't you just join me and my friends for breakfast? Maybe, maybe we'll go try to find your your compatriots. Okay, I can probably do that. Um, what are we doing then? And she just like stands up and is like kind of like rolling on the balls of her feet. Like, okay. Well, they're they're gonna eat. They're eating breakfast. Um, and you're more than welcome to have my bowl. It's it's not my particular taste, but it may be yours. Is that that's food? Uh, it looks like throw up. <laughs> yeah, it's probably both. Um, yeah, you should just eat this. And she reaches into her pocket and pulls out a berry and just hands it. This will feed you for like a whole day. Well, thank you. And it and won't I look like that. I'm going to do the uh, sleight of hand and not eat it at all. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and give me a sleight of hand roll. I'm definitely good uh, eat an insight if you want to see or if you care. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus. I never learned magic as a wizard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not actual. But I've learned actual yeah, not, magic. Not yeah, practical. I've learned actual magic. Uh, it's four. Um, how does a 20 do versus that? Yeah, like, where where do you specifically put the berry when you're you're done faking that you've eaten it? 
Uh, he's got in the inside of his robes. He's got just you know a couple little pockets. Not that he's not like a thief or anything, but he's got little things here and there. So uh, he tries to stuff it in one of those. Okay, well let's go see your friends. And she pats him very hard where she saw him put the berry <laughs> to where it smushes. Yeah, you feel a little bit of a, a squish, and and while while Ronan is wearing a shirt, uh, Professor Hale does oh, not wear a shirt. Not. So you feel a little bit of the squish berry juice seep through your cloak and onto your chest a little. Um, it's actually for later, but okay. Anyway, let's yeah, go. yes, go ahead. That was really rude. Yes, Art. and she just goes and walks. So roughly around the time that Eden's hand makes impact with Hale's chest, there is a shattering of glass happening at the table where Art's at as uh, one glass with a very clear liquid that seems to be foaming on the table has uh, seeped everywhere. The uh, open bottle of rum having been distributed amongst ten individual jars, now nine since one of them seems to have uh, spontaneously combusted in its place. Oh, dang, dang it, I got the com- mixture wrong again. Okay, these ones that seems to be a route right. Okay, and uh, the other nine jars, Art, slightly more meticulously, takes a jug, uncorks it, and pours a small amount of fizzy clear liquid into each of the other jugs, uh, which has a slightly uh, vinegary uh, aroma to it that seems to be mixing with the alcohol, and then with the other nine jars seeming to be slightly more stable, uh, Art proceeds to screw uh, a cap on each of them, and then mindlessly starts taking a bite from the uh, quote-unquote food on the table. Also, kind of takes a quick little peek around, grabs some of the bread, and reaches into the fold of his sack, where the piece of bread will suddenly disappear out of his hands into the sack. You guys. That little guy is really loud. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on him. What's he making? A mess. <laughs> oh. You know everything. That's correct. Just sitting, like, rocking in her chair. Oh, uh, how rude of me. Um, these are my friends. This is Aku. And Keth, sorry, I almost forgot. And Haku looks at you. Um, this, like, almost uh, sunburnt, orangey hobgoblin with this black, like, tufts of braided uh, mutton chops uh, looks at you. And says, uh, how, how are you? Uh, it's nice. It's nice to meet you. And then the half work next to her just shoveling this stuff into his mouth, and he looked up and goes. Oh, oh, how's it going? He just goes, keeps continuing to shuffle the food in his mouth. And this is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't catch your name. Oh, it's because you didn't ask. My name is Eden. I'm Kaiden. Kaiden. It's kind of a silly name. But I like it. Kaiden. It's mine. You could change it if you really don't like it. I'm going to turn it back to the goblin. Uh, Art, as you continue to finish, or as you screw on and you're putting everything back in your pack, uh, you pull, take a chunk of the bread, dip it into your food, and you take a bite, and you're like, you're content, you're starting to eat this stuff. Um, the first thing you realize is that, like, butter now, like, you know butter melts, but you've never experienced melted butter to this extent where it's like just that much butter melted into something Um, but you know that there is a ton of butter in whatever you're eating you know they've they've really got some good taste here I I really have to say this is this has got to be the nicest restaurant I've been in in quite some time Uh, and you you feel a little tug at your leg from underneath the table as to a car is kind of at your feet. Hey, what? You're not supposed to be out of the bag right now. What are you doing out of the bag? They're, they're, what if they see you in here? Hang on. Uh, Art is going to, quote unquote, subtly uh, get this furry little creature back off the ground and 
into his uh, sack and then put the rest of the bread in the bag for for him. Go ahead and give me a sleight of hand check, please. Does Eden see this? Uh, what's your what's your pa- uh, what's your passive? My passive. And, I have to look and Professor Hale, you may roll a perception since you said you were looking back at the goblin. Uh, sixteen. So that was a nine. Oh, 13. Oh, I, I muted. Um, all hey, right. Hi. So so what do the two of them see? So I imagine it's something along the lines of trying to get a cat into a kennel where uh, Art is just haphazardly trying to pick up this uh, little skunk that is you know, practically half his size and trying to get it to go into the bag so as to not be seen by suspicious eyes. And uh, he is not doing a very good job of hiding it. And I'm sure there's probably some squeaks and squeals along the way as he's getting him in there. And once he finally manages to, to get him comfortably into the sack, uh, some sloppy scraps of bread covered in this uh, butter gravy mixture wind up in the bag. And as this is all happening, you're watching them sho- or this this little goblin shovel, um, this what you can all identify or the th- two of you can identify as a skunk. Uh, you hear the door slam open and then a rush of blue, as a medium-sized elven-looking creature, uh, Funara or Utahime, would you like to introduce your character? Rushes to <laughs> the bar. Uh, yes, well, if anyone could catch that uh, bluish uh, figure running past, um, you would see um, that uh, Fanara is a half sea elf, half halfling. So take that in for a second. Uh, she's five foot three. Um, she's eighteen, but she likes to tell people that she's eighteen and a half. So now she's a she's a woman now. <laughs> she has light tan skin, um, like her mother, um, but. What's unique about her is that she has ombre blue hair, so it's like darker um, at the roots, um, but it ends up um, fading out into a really beautiful um, light blue towards the ends of the um, her wavy hair. Um, and she does have fairly long hair that goes down her back. Um, she has green eyes, just like her father as well. Um, she does have um, some a particular feature of um, kind of like bluish scales that are kind of like um, highlighting her cheeks almost like blush in a way but it's so it's it's often hidden by her hair but you know there's times when she moves when you see it um she has a slender um, muscular frame um, but she really loves to wear um, really flowy um, dresses so she's um, wearing this really um pretty uh flowy ombre blue so it's kind of the reverse it's lighter blue at the top and goes down to darker blue so she has that kind of uh theme going and she's wearing a um opal gemstone that's tied to um, a braided cord around her neck and she has um a very distinct um uh aquamarine bracelet that she wears around her wrist and she has um, an anklet that um, has uh, different little seashells around it um, and she wears a, um, it's it's like a golden tint um, to her, um, it's like a, a very intricate headpiece that she has tied around her head. Um, and uh, she does have web feet. <laughs> That's another distinct uh, feature about Fanara, because um, she, she loves to be barefoot as well. So, because barefoot is the way to be. And so she is... Um, kind of holding up her skirt and kind of covering her mouth and she's running and she's like she's like frantically looking for something um and she runs up to um I- I'm assuming it's probably Kaya or someone who's at the front of the bar yeah Kaya you see this half work standing behind the bar and just like staring at you like you're there in front of her quicker than she can react um excuse me um um, do you have like a, a bathroom or, or some place where I can expel myself? Yeah, upstairs. It's the um, the only the door on the right. There's a couple buckets. Up, just go, hurry. 
Not on, the fl- not on the floor. It already she, smells enough. She's like running to try to get to where <laughs> Kaya just explained uh, the buckets were. Mm-hmm. Um, and immediately she like, just like the wind, she, she gets there as quickly as possible. And you just hear. <laughs> Eden leans in for the bartender and is just like, so that's where you got the food. No, no, no. That's oh, not where we I got hate you. Uh, oh, I knew no. I should have brought those herbs. <sighs> what was I thinking? Oh. And, <laughs> She's just like throwing up again. And Kaya makes brief eye contact with you, Professor Hale, and is just like the, I'm so sorry. Yeah, what you what she sees is is uh, Kaiden is actually uh, lowering his hand down. Um, I, I had uh, started sort of the arcane process uh, upon somebody bursting in the door uh, as a as a defense mechanism, um, but upon seeing all that, he would have just sort of dropped his hand. So, um, yeah, that's it's. It, I don't know what else I would have expected here. So. And while you're listening to the beautifully talented uh, C half self selfling 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 there we go selfling 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 how pronounce it yeah selfling uh, yeah. um, and she's mumbling about forgetting herbs and regrets and she's just like in between heaving <laughs> in in struts in a small halfling is Renee. Take it away. Get your fucking hands up. Get on out of your seats. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. Get your fucking hands up. Get on out of your seat. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. All right. Uh, Walking into the tavern uh, is a... Uh, three foot four halfling uh, strumming on a ukulele. He has uh, dark, like bright, dark auburn hair that is like curly and tuft. Um, he is also not wearing shoes uh, for any reason whatsoever. He wears a white tunic uh, with a, a, a dark emerald a uh, vest that has like Celtic embroidery that goes along the edges. Um, he's uh, strumming a lute that is about shaped for him. So it looks like this, that's for sure. Um, he has uh, very slight features for a halfling. Um, he has uh, green eyes that are slightly different than his sisters, uh, only because they have slightly different lineages slightly um but he comes in just strumming a song almost as if <sighs> you know if if you're just gonna keep making racket like that I, i'm 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 just gonna I'm keep sorry, playing parent. I'm, i can't help that i did not bring I should have brought, I knew that we were going on a ship and I forgot to bring the herbs to sell my stomach. You know how I, oh, I, well, actually, well, no, oh, so I, I need, oh, um, I don't um, want to hear you make sick anymore. I, well, I would also like you to not make sick anymore. It'd be nice. Well, what do you have available? I- I don't know what just let me think of things. Um, you hear, and uh, Eden will just put her hands on the bar top real quick, and she I just mean, if grows you have mint, mint leaves leaf out of oh, the bar top. Yeah, druid that, tracks, and they mint just, leaves are perfect. Can uh, do you mind? Yeah, and they just grow up out of the bar top, and then she just takes them off and hands them. And, and Finn will um will uh try to wipe her face because she's she's a little embarrassed at trying to like fix her hair and 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 try to look presentable while she goes over and she um kind of situates her dress and 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 goes over to eden and um uh, uh thank you um excuse me um do you guys have a uh, hot water 
Oh, uh, right. Yes, please. Water. Uh, is, <laughs> it, 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 do you happen to have clean water? Oh, that, that's a very good question, Perrin. Yeah. Clean water would, would be best. I, Kaya, I put air quotes in front of water. Kaya looks at Professor Hill again, and it's like, it's somebody, it's the equivalent of somebody just asked for like a Voss water. Like, really fancy shit. And she just looks at, at you, uh, Kate, and this shakes her hand. We have um, water from the um, stuff that falls from the sky. We put it in barrels every once in a while. Um, I. You have rainwater. Yes, that's the only water we have currently. Yes. All right. Okay. Can I? Can you give me a pitcher so I can go fetch it? Yeah. Please, um, please no. I'll, I'll go. Just, I'll go. Just I'll go get it. And, and, and this half work woman walks get, out. Get, get me three pitchers, please. Not just one. Give me three. Uh, and but he just turns. Have two hands. She, uh, and he turns back to uh, where uh, Finn is, like, like like this teal color uh, and he's just like he comes up and, and realizes like she's like and her over scales are now looking almost greenish as well so now they turn from a blue to like a darker green like almost symbolizing how she's feeling in this very moment Perrin clambers up on a bar stool um, and like starts like rubbing her her back between her shoulders. Um, you uh, you created the mint leaves on the bar, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, they're growing out of the bar top. Okay. Uh, he he leads over to Finn. And he goes, "Do you remember? Do you remember those those berries that Mom used to get for us uh, when we were when we were younger?" Yes, I remember. He goes. Uh, he like gives like a sharp like three-toned whistle like <laughs> and the mint plant starts growing these like um soft green berries um and 10 of them and he plucks one uh as he likes it. he just leans over and like cups her mouth and open open up and he like slides <sighs> the good berry into her mouth and just like plucks the rest of the good berries off of the plant and like tucks them into his pocket now chew that you'll feel full but you just need to breathe i need you to breathe take a take a nice short breath in through the nose and out through the mouth all right oh, dear savandra please lend me your strength What's the harm? uh um she's I... what you would uh call a deity. Um, I pray to her for strength and guidance. She's really helped me along this journey. Ugh. Oh, so like they tell oh, you what to do working. all the time? I feel bubbling though. Right. Um, I have like three of those. They were really mean though, so I left. Oh. I, you, um... Seen your deities? Like, I mean, like physically? Like, you could touch them and poke them? And then she's gonna well, like poke Eden, and then she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just a little. I'm a little out of sorts. I'm sorry. I'm so rude. You just offered me some mint leaves and grew them from the bar, which is actually very impressive. I don't really know how you did that. Uh, what's your name? My name is Eden. Oh, it's a it's a pleasure to meet you, Eden. I'm I'm Fanara. Um, this here is my brother, Perrin. Hello." Art. It's um, uh, you're, uh, you're very pink. Perrin, you just can't go around telling the people that they're pink. But you're I am. She knows that already. You're, you're, and you're blue. Okay, like we've dis, we've determined this. It's, well, it's... only partially blue. Daddy is the one that's the bluest of all of us. Well, I mean, you're, yeah. you're right. Dad is, Dad it does happen to be bluer than most. Mm. In, in ways that I do not care to mention. Um, where's that water? Uh, and he's like waiting for it to come back. Uh, right here in the, the three, the, she comes back, hands you the water. Art. So, uh, Perrin is going to feel a tap on his right shoulder. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting up on a stool. His right boot. I, I, I stand by my statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he turns around, seeing somebody equally as tall as him also standing or sitting uh, on a stool. 
uncomfortably close, uh, definitely within personal bubble distance. What was that thing you were using? He, like, leans away very gently and brings up the loot to his face. Did you mean this? Green. What is this magical device? This is just wondrous. I haven't heard anything like it. Um, and they never heard of a loot before? Have, a you loot? Never heard, have you never heard music before? Oh, this is exciting. Perrin, oh, I've... Perrin, do do something. Play a song. Play, play. Oh, oh Mama's Lullaby. I've certainly heard music before, but just nothing, nothing like that. Usually most of the things that I sound more like, and uh, mm -hmm. Art's gonna find something that he can uh, start making percussive sounds on. <laughs> oh no, I, that, I okay, more... and he just, I, 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 I uh, okay, I understand your speed of music. Uh, and Perrin like puts a finger in his ear and starts like <laughs> wiggling it. And then Finn leans forward to, to Perrin, uh, to his ear and, uh, that sounds like that one time I attempted to play the flute and you told me to never do it again. That's what it sounded like. Now I understand why you told me never to play. I have yet to teach you rhythm. And once we do that, we'll get you mm -hmm. back on your lessons. Um, yeah. And then uh, he's, he turns to Art and then like, hold on one second. And he turns back to um, the water um, and he takes his hands and dips his fingers um, into the water. And as he has it like um, dripping just a little bit, uh, as you would with like fine glassware, he starts running his fingers across the edges of the pitchers. And it does make like this high pitch vibrating sound. Um, and I'm going to cast purify food and drink. So all of this rainwater becomes <clears throat> clean water. Oh. Um, and he, and he picks up the pitcher and he goes, he, tear, he hands it to Finara and he goes, you, you need to drink at least oh, half bubbling. of this. It's bubbling. Drink, drink, it's, drink the, it now. The one thing oh. you notice is it was oh. like, it wasn't like super brackish, but it had like that kind of yellow tint from like just being old and like settled water. So yeah, purify food and drink a hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, did the trick. It's now crystal clear and Kaya's just like. Keep going. You, you you need more. Um, you're you're so much like mum. It's scary. Um, did did you just purify that water with your hands? He sure did. I right, did um, that with only a little bit in this thing. It's it's um, it's a it's a, a halfling trick. Uh, the my my family has the ability to. Uh, manipulate a few things uh, given that we're uh, there's some natural magic about our people that is purely fascinating that do all halflings do that is that a normal halfling uh, thing no uh, i i happen to be a, a a lucky member of a few uh where we're just kind of gifted he's uh, very talented a... so Thank little you, humans are called halfling I no, uh, no, we're not. We're not human. Uh, Do you not have at all. pointy teeth? And she's like getting closer to. Look. He like opens up and just like. No, I mean, he he has really nice teeth. He gets them from our mom. Um, is wait, what your is your name? You, I, mean, I, have, you, I definitely have a goblin. Many, many, many halflings. I mean, my my dads were gnomes, but I don't think many half halflings. I haven't read to very many halflings. Over wait, my journey, are you so a goblin? Uh, excuse, oh. ex, excuse me. Uh, pr pr professor, can I speak with you for a minute? And everybody, you would know everybody at everybody at the the tavern has called you professor since you got here. And, and Kaya like comes around to the bar and like pulls you back up the stairs like halfway up. Do, were, were, were you? Are they here for you? you? Like, are do you know what? What you showed up, and then like three days later. All of these new people showed up. Two of them demanding water that was purified. Sure. No, it's curious. But. Also, they don't have I, shoes. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. But yeah. what's. What I find interesting is none of them seem to be a threat. But all of them, well, maybe except for the goblin, possess yeah, some yeah, form yeah. of arcane. 
abilities, or at least magical abilities from some source. I didn't think of that. A good idea. Um, well, the goblin did order a lot of alcohol, and then the bottle was empty like two minutes later. Uh, I'm kind of concerned about that, sure, just because that I have to maintain. Like this is, a, this is still an establishment. I'm still a bartender. I have to maintain my license. Um, He's got my uncle's magic. That was a joke. Oh. <laughs> uh, wait, you, you tell. It's fine. Shit, you tell jokes now. All right. Um, just wh Once. get whoever these people are. You started interact. Nobody else. You notice everybody stay clear of the new people except for you. So you, whoever these people are, they're, they're your problem. They're not mine. I was merely assessing them for my own personal risk. Uh, I care not for this establishment, but you have been hospitable, so I will at least make the request. I'll make sure I clean the closet for you. I'm sorry that I sent her up there. That's, yeah, it's fine. They are peculiar. Yeah. I'll walk back down. Um, Kaya goes upstairs to start cleaning. Big waves as you come down. That is my friend. And his name is Kaiden, and he maybe might change his name, but he doesn't know for sure. That's... Ka Kaiden? Was it? Ka Kaiden, yes. Oh, it's Hello, a pleasure Kaiden. to meet you. Uh, this, this is my sister, uh, Finara, uh, and my <gasps> name is, is Perrin. Wait, what is your name? Pleasure. You didn't tell me, Mr. Goblin. What? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. My, my dad's always tell me I need to be better with this whole social interaction thing. Um, hi, um, I'm Art. It's a Hi, pleasure I'm... to meet you. Uh, I've I read all about goblins. I've not. Well, and uh, this is actually the first time that Art has actually noticed Eden, and upon making eye contact with her, he just kind of stares for a minute. And she just notices and begins to stare back. And, he, and Perrin leans over to Finara and just goes, should, should we leave? Like, should we let them have their moment is this one of those moments like like um you and what's her name back in the day when y'all like, had and, that fling during the summer uh and, oh. and a parent just like looks at her like just and squints a little harder and then pulls out he's got like a, a tiny little uh uh penny whistle and he starts playing the opening to my heart will go on <laughs> no this is uh this is uh this is not love, this is confusion in motion. Isn't that love a little bit confusing. of confusion? At least that's I, what I always thought it was. To get a little, you know, tingly I, butterflies. I, 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 love is a great many things. Um Deep question for this place. Love uh uh love will lift us up where we belong. You know, all all, all we need is love. <laughs> all you need is love. Um, so apart, pardon me, I, I don't know, uh, obviously who you guys are or, or, or what, what your purpose is. Um, I've only Finara been here a couple days Perrin. myself. Oh, Finara nice. Perrin. That's okay. Nice I don't know you. either. Um, Eden, Eden, right? Yeah. And Art? Art, yes. Uh, Art. Uh, yeah. Um, so Perrin, uh, 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 Pinara, Pinara, uh, the Perrin, uh, Kiki, and, uh, Kiki, she points at Kaiden. No. Mm, nope. That is not mm -hmm. it. That is definitely not it. This isn't a name. Most people around here call me Professor, but you can call me Kaiden. Well, it seems okay. like everybody knows who everybody is. There shouldn't Good. be a problem. So, there isn't, um, from my perspective. Uh, in fact, I find you all very um, curious. But the uh, people that run this establishment are a little picky with customers, particularly new customers, um, and they're a little nervous about all of your arrivals. Um, well, that was very oh, rude of me to, to be um, <laughs> expelling myself right upon entry. I well, didn't I mean to. I get no seasick. Oh, uh, speaking of which, uh, uh, since so it seems like you're doing better now, do you need some food? And Art's going to pull up a bowl of the, uh, the meal that he was uh, served earlier. That's oh, no, 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 food. That's I mean, vomit. He he just he just kind of like slides the bowl away from his sister and like leans over to Art and just like she's got a very sensitive <laughs> stomach when she comes off the ocean. 
Um, and he hands uh, Fenara another berry. Um, I do better when I'm swimming in the ocean, when I'm on some type of, you know, boat, like, you know, um, I, all the rocking and, and things, it just, it upsets my stomach. It's really hard for people to understand because I'm such a great swimmer and I am, you know, the way I how am. You, so, um, How do you eat while you're swimming? Oh, I, I don't eat while I'm swimming. I'm just saying that, you know, um, I, I, I just, I don't do well in, in, in boats per se, but oh. I do really well when I'm swimming in the ocean. I Why have it. you guys sailed here? Kaiden is having to leave because the people don't want him at the bar anymore because he's weird. No, I don't oh. have, no. Um, well, that's I'm true. So, no, he seems really like rude. a nice person. Yeah, it's, um, uh, I'm you perhaps not explaining it very well. Nope, uh, it's not that at all. Uh, they just are curious to know uh, who you are and uh, what brings you here. More right, um, I, my apologies, uh, Kaiden. The, yes. uh, if I'm not mistaken, we were brought here by the proprietor. Yes. Mm -hmm. The proprietor, okay. Um, of, of, of the yes. inn, Umbra? Uh, um, is, Umber, Umber. Uh, Umber his is name, his Umber. name. Mm -hmm. And that is not this place. That's not this place, right? Out of character. Uh, what's from, the name from, of this from, place? From what you, the, the proprietor of Le Imite, uh, you don't know, Professor. Okay. Uh, all right, then I, he'll say, okay, okay, I'm not sure. I, I've never met the proprietor of, of this establishment, so perhaps. And the right perhaps, Right, yeah, we perhaps. Will. Right, we Perhaps were so. um, uh, uh, brought here by the, uh, the owner of the establishment, who's a friend of our father, um, who helped us yes. sail uh, from our home. Uh, we're, we're originally from the Isles of Lilithol, uh, mm -hmm. if any of you have heard of it. I have, the yes. Oasis? Yes, we're, we're, from, we're, we're from the Oasis. So I'll turn to Kaya and say, they're here to meet the proprietor of this place. Oh, I I'm think muted. we were supposed to meet with the Kaya. Yeah. Yes. Is that right. you? That's uh, Kaya. And the half work is walking down like with a bucket and a mop in it. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, give me two seconds. Um, uh, oh, I can clean. I can clean this up. I'm so sorry. That was very rude of me to come in, expel, and then not try to clean up. That I had to have better home training than that. I'm it's, sorry. It, 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 it's already clean, dear. Oh. Thank, thank, thank you though. I appreciate it. Sorry. Next time I will save it for you. I promise. Okay. Um. And she just let me and like you look at the bucket and it's already like filled with all of the gross ex expellent um and she walks out uh through a back door and you just hear a quick splash and she walks back in and like hands on her smock cleaning up uh okay. then we'll take a gold piece and give it to her and... like not thinking because that's just finn forgetting that you know that's just you know that's her way of saying yeah. thank you Perrin lets it slide well, for and you, this time. You grew, you, the two of you grew up in a place where people would actively do that to you. So, like, that kind of exchange, you guys just off the top of your head are like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, like that makes sense. Um, but she takes the gold coin and, and pockets it real quick. Okay. Um, we're, all, we're all settled. We're all good. And she looks, like, across the, the, the bar at the five of you. Keth, Haku, you guys good? Mm -hmm. Kath, yeah, and Hagusha. Are you gonna finish, Goblin? You gonna finish your, 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 your stuff? Oh, uh, I, well, I, I'm probably gonna just save this for later. And Art's gonna take the bowl and open up his coat, open up one of his pockets, and pour the contents of the bowl into the pocket. Here, uh, Kat, you can have mine. I'll take mine. Thank oh, you for, oh, great, great. I'll save that for later too. That's not what. I, okay. Oh, <laughs> give me another bowl. And, and he's. Oh puts like a couple silver pieces down um all right uh, isle folk how can i help you because you guys apparently are here to see me right um uh master umber sent us uh to speak with you like like the umber i he looks at finara and then back to her i i'm, I'm, I'm sorry they might um uh, no, I, that's correct. Um, we were told to find um, Kaya, who uh, runs this specific tavern, and um, connect us with 
Um, oh, yes. If I remember correctly, I mean, maybe maybe I have a misinformation at some point, but I'm pretty sure I remember in detail. No. But I'm sorry if no. I got anything incorrect. No, uh, you have all of that information correct. Uh, I, I am Kaya. Um, the, usually people just don't walk in here and ask for Umber. I'm really thrown off right now. I'm sorry. Um, you know what? I'm going to run back. Give me like two minutes. Uh, you, all, you all sit here, hang out. Um, I'll see what I can do. How's that sound? Oh, 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 if it helps, um, say that um, we're the children of um, Castian Valar. Um, that no, might... wait, the Castian Valar. Yes. Oh, God, yes. here we go. That's I... my daddy, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we run Valar's uh, Hope Spring Resort. Well, yeah. I, I don't know nothing about a resort, but Castian and... Well, a lot, a lot. She looks over and like winks at Haku. Uh, a lot of us go way back. Um, I'll, I'll go, I'll go talk to Umber real quick. Um, he'll, he'll, oh, yeah, boy. he'll want to speak with you. Uh, and All right. How, what, what, what ship did you guys come in on? Oh, um, it was oh. A, 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 a Tonzo. Is that how you say it? I'm, sometimes I have trouble with pronunciation. Logan needs to look up the notes now. <laughs> the oh, the uh, the Atanzo? I saw that Atanzo? one come in earlier. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, that's, that that's the one. Uh, no, well, it, apparently no. it's um Umber's. Right, it, um, Umber owns the boat. We just happen to be able to buy our way onto it. Gotcha. Uh, how travel good? Everything, captain, crew, like good report. They didn't like they didn't. Uh, yes. They were, uh, they were fine. Uh, they treated us fairly. We uh, had a very nice bunk in the lower deck area. Good. good. Yes. Good. But I mean, just tell them. Um, I apologize for the times that I got a little, like, just a few seconds ago. Um, no, you're. I can't she help didn't. it. I really try. Right. Um, yeah. Better, better swimming in the water than on yeah. the boat. Oh, she. The water. she yeah. yeah. She spent an entire week doing that for pretty much most of her travels. All right. Uh, and then studying, you know, as, gotcha, as one gotcha. does. All right. Well, I'm going to go. I'll go talk to the boss. Um, okay. I'll be back in a few minutes. Y'all just obviously stay here. And she heads back uh, into the area where, like, the kitchen would be uh, and disappears behind a set of double doors. Professor, Kaiden. Uh, real quick, while, when she leaves, actually, maybe even while she was talking, uh, I would have uh, sat down, hopefully inconspicuously, I uh, pulled out uh, a notebook. Uh, it's pretty thin, uh, kind of worn, but functional more than anything. Uh, and you may or may not see him, but he would be writing, uh, making notes on each individual person, probably mumbling uh, to myself, you know, uh, can can perform some type of halfling magic, uh, made mint arise from uh, a bar. Uh, worship certain deities, possible magic origins there, da 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 da. The entire time she's gone. Yes, Art. Out of nowhere, uh, Art would probably have made his way over to uh, Professor Hale's left shoulder and would be reading aloud the words that he is writing in the book. So, so, uh, without missing a beat, uh, he will, I will continue to write, uh, and it'll just, uh, perform some type of, uh, resonant magic with sound. Magic and Goblins smell terrible. Goblins They're smell probably terrible. the worst type of probably people. Probably the worst type of people. Oh, that's, that's mean. really mean. That's so I don't mean. know what the goblin is, but that's mean. <laughs> what yeah, if the like, goblins think that you stink, sir? He, he, Have you he thought puts, about that? Perrin hmm. puts his hand on, on Fenara's shoulder. Do you, do you remember, um, they're, they're, do you remember the word sarcasm? Oh, it's that thing that I often don't get when you're doing it. Yeah. Right. I, it, okay. We're still we're still learning. And he goes, okay. Professor, uh, dry wit seems to be your forte. Uh, be careful around these parts. Yeah, I just don't appreciate eavesdropping, but it's okay, little one. I'm. Uh, you you can read this. It's not. It's nothing important. I'm just simply making observations of all of you and your 
particular skill sets, which are impressive. But I thought you this is cool. cool. Mm-hmm. I'm what? just always looking for new information, and it seemed like you were writing something interesting. I can always. show you something cool if you want. I would very much like to see it. Sure. Well, I saw the art I had a little friend earlier. I have one too. Where? Uh, uh, th- there's, there is nothing I am carrying with me. I am here by myself. You stuffed it in the bag. It wasn't very happy. You, you watch as a little skunk head pops out of the bag. Ooh. And Eden will peel back like the fabric on her arm and she like makes like a little mouth with it and white hair will begin to grow from her arm and it kind of elongates and the little mouth on her hand turns into a little weasel face. And then the rest of the arm starts to grow legs and a tail and it kind of just detaches itself as her arm regrows and now there is a little white ferret. This is Grim. Oh, I have never in my life seen anything like a parent, is that? Is it normal for people to grow animals from their uh, arm and to regrow another arm? And she's just I, sitting there giving grim scritches. I, um, F- Fidara, I don't, re- I, no, the answer to that question is no. And he turns to the professor and just says, I feel like maybe that's the, that's the note you might want to take here, professor. So upon seeing the animals, uh, and the way in which it was summoned, uh, Kaiden will uh, sort of jerk down uh, out of nowhere and say, I have one of these too. And then sit right back up and shake it off and, and agree. Yeah, yes, I, I agree. That is the note I should be taking. You have one too? No. No, I had, you I guess. Said... Yeah, I had. It was a past tense. That's oh, sad. You, you can't grow that. new ones? Um, and I'd never summoned it like that before. That's interesting. That's just how that one happens. I don't know. It did it by itself, and now I do that. <laughs> and he's, like, sitting on her shoulder. Just like. So does that mean, um, Mr. Art, that your um, creature I, there grew no, from no, no, a no. growth on your back? And, no, that's and... not that's how that works. No, <laughs> no, no. no, no, no. no. We, we're, we're amazed because that's unique. D- Dulcar here oh. isn't uh, any sort of a, a magical creature or anything, but he's still oh. definitely the most wonderful creature in the world, and uh, Art's gonna excitedly, without even thinking about it, uh, pull Dukar out of the sack and present. Ooh. And, and, and this is where, like, Perrin, like, steps in front of Venara, like, puts his arm out and goes, I, uh, can we... Can we be careful with that, please? Uh, would you... Would you, would you mind? Um, he's very soft! And he looks, he like looks down like where the tail is located and then looks back up at Art. I, I just don't want to uh, frighten him by any means. Hello, what is your name? As Eden is just talking to this little skunk. If he like chitters, if he like chitters at her, she's like chittering back the, and just the, like the squatting down in front of, the of him. The at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> She's like squatting down in front of it, like chittering with it and just talking. And there's like Grim on her shoulder, like. Art is just watching this conversation with fascination. Um, oh shit, Grim! <laughs> my, my Grog. Fr- I, like I rolled a die and then I tapped gro- my Grog. Fanar is just looking like, like she doesn't know who to focus on because th- she thinks that these people are all so different and interesting. And so she's kind of just like looking back and forth and then trying to figure things out. So it's like wheels turning in her head. Yeah. So the one thing you'll notice is that when you're interacting with this skunk, the skunk is turning back and it's very like almost like you're trying to mimic it or it's trying to mimic you. Like you're just going around in circles trying to mimic each other. Um, But the one thing that you do notice that at some point it does like look up and make eye contact with your shoulder with with Grim. Um, and when it does, you watch as the tail comes up for a second, and the tail is facing in Art's direction. Like, the, the art, Art's only one in the blast radius. But it comes up for a second, and it stands up tall, and then it, like, leans forward <coughs> and, and, like, sniffs, and then chitters again, and you mimic the chitter, and Grim mimics the chitter, and it just settles. The tail comes back down. And, and Art is completely oblivious to all of this. Uh, Perrin just kind of like 
looks over at Fenara. When we when we talked about seeing new things, I didn't I I, I didn't expect it to be so immediate. I, I mean, I, who would have thought that um, Daddy would want us to go to such an interesting place with so many fascinating people? I mean, well, maybe it was just so then we can get all types of experiences at once. I, 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 I just, I, I would hazard uh, a, a potential option here that maybe, perhaps, Dad didn't exactly expect it to be like this, and he just kind of like point, like thumbs over it, like all of that nonsense going on behind him. Um, if you guys would have arrived two days ago, it wouldn't have been this. It's picked up a bit in the past hour. Interesting. Everybody's um, traveling a bit these days? Yeah, it looks like everybody's on the move. He just turns around and chitters like, yes. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't speak rodent. Oh, it's not a rodent. It's a weasel. I... And Fanara instantly, she starts kind of like when when Eden's doing that, she's kind of like observing, and then she takes out her diary, and she's like, she's like drawing a sketch of Eden, but then also to trying to like make out like certain little work, like things that could be phrases because she doesn't know exactly what Eden is, so she's like, oh, it's a new language, interesting. Um, all right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Art, who was it? What? Hmm? Uh, wh what brings you here? Oh, well, uh, I, I just finished my last job. Um, I was, uh, working on this, uh, this, this barge that was damaged, and, uh, I fixed it. And then, uh, they said that if I was going to look for more work, because I need more work to fund all my research projects, uh, they said that I should come here. And then when I came here, I was directed to this, to go to the, 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 the stankiest, uh, bar in town. And, uh, the, apparently that pointed me, uh, right here. So here we are. So I'm just, you know, looking for work. What uh, sort of research projects do you do? Oh, uh, well, you know, a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And, uh, you know, uh, stuff. Better question. <laughs> what were you doing over there earlier with all that alcohol? Oh, that? Well, uh, that's, uh, here we go. Uh, oh, oh, no, not that one. Uh, here we go. And uh, Art's going to pull out one of the jars, which has this uh, clear uh, liquid in it. And he's gonna hand it to you. Just be be very careful with that. What am I holding? Oh, th it's nothing much. It's just a, a little bit of acid. What is acid? This Eden Ooh. is like staring at us. <laughs> oh, it's it's kind of a nasty uh, chemical. Um, yeah, it it's can a... definitely hurt people. It can hurt people if you're not careful, but it's also used for many different other properties for uh, creating other substances. It also uh, can it, be a cleaning agent. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh that so is true. The, one Do of you... my deities would actually take that stuff and put little animals in it. What? Oh, what? Wait, I just uh, hold on a second. Uh, but did you? <laughs> I. Uh, that is awful. It, that's a bit of a stretch for me to. Um, I don't. And like Perrin is having a hard time it's conceptualizing a bit of a, this. It's a bit of a stretch for all of us as the half orc is like on his second bowl of this great. Eden has like, no idea what a deity is. She just like, thinks it's something that you have to talk to and it tells you what to do. So Finn so goes up to Eden and like uh, reaches out for Eden's hands. Oh, if that's what you mean, darling, you were dealing with with some some evil deities. Oh. Bless you. Oh, really mean. That you're 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 okay and 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 that little grim there wasn't in that pot of acid too. I'm glad you left that deity. That that doesn't I can always tell you about another deity. I promise that she did won't have you throwing poor animals into or creatures into vats of acid. That's horrible. She'd like to play mean games like that though, but I never got hurt, so I, I, that's very good Aiden I'm happy to hear that and then like uh, like almost like subconsciously Perrin like reaches in and grabs a good berry and like pops it in his mouth 
grabs another one and like feeds it to Dulcar and just continues to like just just shake his head at Eden in in just sheer awe. So um, I, I've been wondering. Um, I most of my reading has kind of suggested that such a thing doesn't exist, but you seem to be meeting all the qualifications, and I, I'm kind of wondering, are you're good with little critters, and you got these these lovely wing things, and you're you're very pretty, and uh, are you an angel? Because you talk with know. deities, you say, and uh... what's an angel? Uh, well, but up until now, I thought that they were just uh, works of you know fiction or like stories that people you know told to you know put people to put little creatures to sleep and stuff. But you seem to be matching all the descriptions and everything that I've been reading. Well, that might explain a lot. I don't know. I am. Um... This is a long story, but maybe I am. I don't know. That would make sense then, if that's what you think. That's not how that works. Well, how does it work? You know all this stuff too. Well, no, I mean, just because somebody thinks it's true doesn't mean it's true. It might be still be true, but that doesn't, you need facts and an understanding of the situation. No, oh, that, I that, see. That, that's definitely true. You need to make sure that you back it up with your research. It's it's just this is the first time I've ever experienced a, 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 a living phenomenon of this sort of thing. Wait, what do you see, Perrin? I uh, I see a a a a, a very skeptical man, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, and he just kind of uh, he smiles, looking at the professor. I I hazard. I guess that perhaps maybe um, uh, thoughts of fleeting uh, hypothesis or hypotheticals don't resonate well with you. No, you would actually be quite wrong. My entire existence is unanswered questions. Same. We, we actually kind of share some of that in common, it would seem. You say you're a professor? Was. Oh, did they did they kick you out because you didn't know how to smile? Oh, pay her in. You can't be going pay her in. No, they can I, smile. I, Look, that's there it is now. Is that something someone can get kicked out for? It didn't work. No, that's not Anara definitely either. elbowed Perrin, like had to bend down to elbow him like she he's, normally he's, does. He's still on a stool, so he's. Yeah, no, he's, oh, he's, he's, he's still on a stool. I thought he came down. Right so then, I'm, yeah, yeah, I got him. I got him good. No, I, uh, oh. I, I left it my own accord for, for family. Oh, that's wonderful. That's, family very important. I, I understand. The most. Is what? that um, why you're here? Is your family in town? No, actually, I kind of embarrassed for asking all of you yours uh, when, in fact, I I, I don't know mine. Uh, I woke up here three days ago. You woke That's up here. Uh, concerning. Uh, I understand. Quite. Sometimes you have dreamed for a long time and you're telling a bunch of stories in your head, and then you wake up and you're not where you were. And then you run away for a long time. That sounds a little bit like when somebody's under the influence of a lot of alcohol. I don't drink. Is that that stuff? Really bitter? This is really nasty. Well, recently I experienced something. I drank <laughs> and I didn't know that it was. I, it just tasted like yummy juice. So I was drinking a lot of it. And then my brother was like, doing this and then I was like I didn't really understand the signals and I had already down like two or three might have been four five I can't remember but they were really delicious but then I like literally couldn't I was all woozy and talking crazy and then I blacked out a little bit and then mama and daddy were really really upset and then oh um that's that parents look is for me to be quiet I'm sorry it's it's all right. You're just gonna 
I just don't want you to embarrass yourself any further. Uh, it's, she had one too many. She learned real quick. That's all you really need to know. I heard that you can forget things and where you, you wake up and, you know, at least some of the people at the, the, the establishment was telling me that they've had similar experiences. You know, if you, you have the good stuff, usually, they said. Usually those are short instances and I believe what she may be talking about is a bit longer. Oh, it's a long time. Upon hearing uh, that our good professor only woke up here a few days ago, Art's going to have an incredibly inquisitive look on his face and is going to take a small hammer and not aggressively, but firmly tap Professor Hale on the knee. What um, happens? Vow of reflexes will make my leg kick up. Does it feel fleshy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How to and test that bit, theory. And a, and a bit bony, I guess. Because uh, he's, you know, he's not going to have a lot are, of fat on him. Are, are you a doctor, Art? What? Is that something doctors do? What was that for? Oh, I just had to test something. Nothing to worry about. You know, when you say it like that, it would right. provide a significant amount of concern because there's a lack of explanation. From one studious person to another, you might want to ask before you start experimenting on people. Oh, that's a, that's yes, a thing. You're, you're right. I remember uh, dad always did tell me that I, I need to be a little bit more conscious of that. Sorry. <laughs> yes. It's okay. Now I've, I've been, uh, I've been looking for someone and I just had to check something. Sure. Uh, where is Kaya? And he just <laughs> looks yeah. towards the stairs. Kaya um, comes out from these double doors, led well, into the back behind the bar. Uh, um, I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, I there are a lot of questions. Uh, typically, people don't name drop Umber and then name drop Cassian, and then yeah, it's been a this this has been a real weird day. Um. Yeah, um, it, it, you can hear from, I would say, though, as the, the half-work is continuing to eat the, the, the slop. Um, Umber... Did you want more? I, I still have plenty of extra. Uh, um... Maybe in a bit. Um, and Kaya's just... Okay. Look, uh, Umber, um, Umber will see you now. Uh, um, follow, follow me. And she kind of motions for Fenara and Perrin to come behind the bar with her. No. Thank I'll you. Follow. Um, and you head behind the bar, go back into the um, head back into the oh, oh wow, I just immediately just mind blinked. I'm sorry. Uh, went into the back, go go into the back room, and the back room is pretty much empty. There's a small like little pot on uh, the hearth uh, inside there uh, with this bubbling liquid in it. Uh, and she goes to the back where there's this hatch, and she opens it up, and you can see a ladder that goes down and, and uh, right right this way. All right. Did did you? They're they're not with you, are they? I mean, not uh, not by name or by or, or lineage by any means, but they they were here when we showed up. Yeah, we just made their acquaintance. Listen, I'm only saying this because I was friend. I'm kind of friends with your dad, um, and I'm. <sighs> Wait, is he really? He really owns a resort in the Oasis. Like that's that's a hundred percent. That's true. Like that's a thing. Yes. Yes. Um, our, our father uh, uh, settled down with my mother um, mm -hmm. in the way in the oasis, and and that's what he does now. Instead of being out and about and and the adventuring mm -hmm. merchant that he used to be, he's actually kind of a almost a retiree, kind of uh, <laughs> in a way. Sort of. I mean, all of his business connections really help with supplies and such right. at the resort. So it's coming really handy because he knows a lot of uh, people and, and he's been a lot of places. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, well, 
Umber is downstairs. Uh, I'll ba I'll go back and keep your friends company then. Oh, uh, ooh, hey. <laughs> big word to be using after one <laughs> small moment of connection. Uh, just well, I hope we can become friends with them. All right, um, and he just like turns, keeps going over to, to Umber's office or wherever. So you head down, you go into this hatch that's in the floor, and you climb down this ladder. The two of you, um, almost immediately. Oh wait, you guys are both have dark vision. Um, mm -hmm. yep. In this like small oh. little corridor. Oh no, halflings don't have dark vision. Uh, yeah, so I guess this... I guess Fanar would lead then and like help Aaron. Yeah, I don't this... have dark vision. <laughs> <laughs> in this small little corridor that maybe goes about 15 feet with a singular door at the end. And as you guys approach the door and give it a slight, we're going to go on a quick break. Thanks. Quick reminder for those of you who are watching, put the word converge into chat uh, for your chance to win a set of umbral oculus dice. Uh, the word converge, C-O-N-V-E. R G E, because I'm a history teacher that knows how to spell things in English. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back in about five, ten minutes, uh, and we'll catch you in a minute. Thanks for sticking with us.
ready for this. And we're back. I think. Yeah, yeah, we're back. There we go. Double. I had to double check that I didn't keep myself muted when we when I transferred <laughs> over because, as Ronan knows, I went like a whole half hour one morning doing that, and then Ronan's like, "Dude, I can only hear Tristan. Is that a problem?" And I'm like, "Great. I've been commenting on this game for the past half hour, and now." I just thought you were being polite. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. It I wasn't being polite. <laughs> I'm like, not oh, polite. Yeah, I thought, you were like, oh, yeah. I just thought it was Tristan streaming. I'm like, no, it's my channel. Why would Tristan <laughs> be streaming? Um, no, but welcome back to the Ekroom Expeditions. Uh, I am your friendly internet dungeon master, Logan Hanley, uh, with this amazing crew of adventurers. Um, we're going to do a quick go around, and then I'll do some shout outs and sponsor stuff real quick, and then uh, we'll get back into it. So, yeah, Taryn, go. <laughs> Hi, I am Taryn Hackett, also known as Val Roof across the socials. Generally creative human, eldritch entity. Uh, I am a tabletop performer and GM over in the Initiative Order. I run a cult divinity lost homebrew campaign where I scare the crap out of my players because I love it. Uh, I'm also a creator behind UO underscore dice. That's Umbral Oculus Dice on Instagram. Go follow me there. Check out my shop. I'm also a sponsor because dice. Because we need more um, dice. Uh, Utime. Yeah. Hi, guys. I'm Utihime, uh, cosplayer, streamer, TTRPG performer. Uh, and uh, you can catch me on the social of the medias at Utihime Cosplay on Facebook, Instagram, here on Twitch, where I occasionally uh, stream a variety of different games. And Brianna DeCosta on Twitter. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Ren. Hey, I'm Ronan Fox. Uh, Logan, I just sent you a message. Uh, you can find me on <laughs> socials uh, at Ronan Fox, F A W K S. Uh, I'm a Twitch streamer. Uh, that I'll be back in October. You can find my channel at Learn Fox, uh, and I'm a D and D content creator and TTRPG RPG streamer. That's me. Uh, Eddie, I'm gonna look into what you just sent me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Eddie, your Discount Bard. You can find me on all the various social medias at Discount Bard. I'm a TTRPG performer, voice actor, overall creative person, real life jack of all trades, and polymath. Uh, you can find me on Twitch streaming Sea of Thieves and other variety content. You can also find me floating around various channels like this one, playing funny characters like Art, and also a full-time professional silly person. But here to have a good time. And last but not least, Renee. Hello everyone, my name is Renee Beauregard. You can find me at Dragon Rock RPG and at Dragon Rock RPG Design on Instagram and Twitter, uh, where me and my friend Daniel Lieberman make uh, 5e supplements for D&D. Now you're muted. <laughs> now I'm muted. Great. Um, uh, 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 hang on. I'm, I'm looking I at keep something. Casting for, silence for on you accidentally. Quick. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to spam bard emojis. Bard emojis. Do it. You don't. You don't have to worry about it right now. You, you can. Future right uh, now. It doesn't look like it in the. It doesn't look like <laughs> it yeah. in the in the book. So I yeah, so. I would I would say swap one. Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. Um. But yeah, awesome. A um, couple things. Uh, uh, shout outs, Brianna Flame, for the amazing overlays. Um, and if you ever want graphic art done, uh, get all, go contact her for gra uh, any kind of gra graphic design, photographs, stuff like that. Um, Esoteric does the maps for the Lands of Ecrium. So if you need cartography, check him out. Uh, Dell, who does the amazing art, that's down below. Um, so if you need character art if you, for your campaign or just for personal, uh, check out Dell. Uh, absolutely wonderful working with uh, with them. And yeah, just overall awesome. Um, and then who am I missing? Adrian Von Zegler, who is the um, all the ambiance music and stuff other than the amazing uh, Perrin Hope Singer, who is playing his lovely lute. Um, yeah, sponsors. We have dragon rock rpg creators of fine uh D, D fifth edition content check them out for just like they make a bunch of stuff they make subclasses they make races they make backgrounds they don't make classes because then i'm gonna get killed if i say that um uh, yeah uh then umbral oculus obviously amazing dice converge converge in chat if you want to win a set of like a full set of dice not even just the d20 a full set of dice um and then last but not least the initiative order amazing ttrpg community um yeah 
check them out they have community games they do a bunch of charity stuff um they're absolutely fabulous people amazing to work with and a lot of these people are also in a lot of their games so you should go watch their stuff like let's be honest um yeah all right let's dive back in because like i'm like now i'm at the point where i'm like jittery and like just want to play uh, <laughs> i got like that little bit like yeah uh but so perrin and Finara. Two of you are in this tunnel, you rap on the door, and you hear a, come in. Bernard will slowly, uh, like, poke her head in and, like, open the door. Uh, inside, you see a leather-clad individual, their face a little bit kind of furry. Uh, their hair kind of longer going back. Um, it's the type of cut that's, like, parted to the side, and then, like, the other, the side that isn't parted is shaved um kind of like renee's now except more over to one side um she's sitting there leather armor uh feet up on a giant ornate desk uh made of some sort of mahogany uh across from her you see these uh a giant kind of like meeting table with a number of chairs uh, come on in have have a seat. Kaya told me you un wanted to speak with Umber. Right. Uh, good morrow, sir. Um, my name is Perrin Hope Singer. Uh, this is my sister, Venara Valar, and we are the uh, children of Castian Valar. <laughs> wow. Uh, hmm. Okay. That one, and she points at you. You, you look like you look like Cassie. I could see it in the face. You and points at Perrin, stepfather. Gotcha. Um. Well, you're not supposed to use that word. Anymore. Well, she. It's easier for her. Uh, don't worry about it. It, it, it. Sorry, your father. Uh, please take a seat. We're uh, we're old friends. Thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to meet someone who's uh, who knows our our dad um because we like we're aware of what he does or what he has done in the past but it's it's very strange the reaction and he looks at Fenara and looks back to Humber the reaction to his name is kind of interesting outside of home yeah um i mean he uh, and like she like pauses and like thinks about their words for a second. It was a good time. It was um, ended a little abruptly, uh, which ex points to the two explains a lot. Um, glad to see he's still doing all right though, and is holding his own. Uh, he sent you here. He, he told you to come find Umber. Yeah, well, pretty much. I mean, well, first he said to go uh, meet with Kaya, and Kaya would know your whereabouts, and then talk with you gotcha. for uh, for assistance. Well, um, good good to him to remember everybody. Uh, but I'm 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 Aoife. Oh, oh, pleasure to oh, to meet both you're of not, you. You're not Umber. You're not Umber. Oh, oh, I'm I'm so sorry. Listen. Like he he didn't give us any type of description or information I, hold, or detail. Hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Is Umber some sort of cover name? You you're the smart one, aren't you? I um uh, smart smart is a bit of a stretch. Uh I would I would just say uh, socially savvy is is what I would call this. Uh, I like to think that I have uh, uh, smarts too, just in different areas. Everybody has their specialties. And I wasn't. I'm. Cassian taught you well. Um, both of you. Uh, it is of sorts. Um, I do at times go by Umber. Uh, as does Umber. Umber goes by Umber as well really depends on the situation and since um the name cassian was thrown around 
you thought it best just to double check before you met the boss. Right. So you're like a you're like a flat sheet underneath the duvet. What's a do? Du- what you? Oh, you, you I, sleep- I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't mean to overstep. We, I, I it's hope- like a like a quilt, like a blank, big blanket. It's what you, it's fluffy. what you put on. It's very comfortable. You know, uh, it gets uh, hot here. We don't like we. Well, it gets hot where we're from all the yeah. time. And you sleep just, with? Do you sleep with blankets? It's well, like a level you, of comfort. Or you comfort. can sleep on top of them, you know, and then you can switch out okay, this the is- different you know, covers, and then to I, match the, uh, you know, the interior of the room. You've seen upstairs, right? No, we've only really seen the bar. Oh, that's mm-hmm. that's that's it. That's about oh. it. That's <laughs> your level of hospitality. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, you we, might need this some is help it, with that. The, would you, do you want, uh, we could give you some pointers about how to, like, <gasps> Yes, that's such a great idea. We can teach you all about um, what Mama taught us about front of house um, duties, and we can make sure that everything is spick and span and presentable for the public, and it becomes the number one place to be. You could create an entire yeah. ecosystem uh, based on c- comfort if you if yeah. you really wanted to focus on it. If, you know, it might need some renovating, but you know, if you find the right people, sometimes you can find people who are willing to, you know, work for a little bit less. Than if, if, others. if our main source of income was hospitality, mm-hmm. I would one hundred percent take you up on that offer. However, uh, Umber could give two shits about the revenue that Le Emite, uh makes, so it, it stays as is. Um, if, if you maybe, if Umber deems it appropriate, the two of you can work on some stuff. That's going to take time, though. Even though you're casting its kids, it's, I'm going to tell you right now, it's like, Umber's really hard trusting people. It took a while for him to trust your father. And then when he finally got to the point where they were all kind of square, like, like this, this happens. Oh, to, no, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, he points to Finara. That's when she happens. Well, she happened, but now this is in our lap. And uh, we don't... Are, oh, are, are we imposing? No, not at all. Well, we Did, wouldn't want to do that at all. We're not trying to be rude. And no, you're not, you're not imposing. It's more of like uh, your father sent you here thinking that we owed him a favor. Um Kind of, right? Like, you guys are here because we know your dad. Um, listen, why are you guys here, actually? Because I never asked you that. I'm sorry. Umber, Umber's probably wondering that, too. He he turns to Fedora, crosses his arms, and just... Um, and then uh, she she's kind of, like, fiddling with her fingers, and then she uh, puts her hands behind her back, and then she's kind of, like, rocking back and forth. Um, so, um kind of a long story so i'm gonna try to make it short um please please do you know um you know that uh when you have an itch and you need to, to scratch it mm-hmm. yeah 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 um so you know i kind of had one of those well also too kind of an epiphany or maybe more of a dream and in, in connection to my deity it's a again long story but basically um, I, I, I wanted to, to, like my father, you know, he, he traveled a lot of places, met a lot of people and, and, you know, I hadn't done that yet. So I, I kind of, um, started having that itch, you know, happen where I kind of wanted to, to go beyond just the oasis. So, uh, my brother, uh, also too wanted to go out and, 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 and we got to spend some more time together. And so it's kind of like we're, we're going on an adventure. The, she's a lot, she's a young lady. She wants to see the world. Haifa. Well, I'm, I'm 18 and a half now. Well, you saw a lot on the boat. Um, yes, lots of interesting people. I was paying attention and, yeah. and, and doing my, my, some of my lip reading that I usually do. 
Um, but I try not to tell people because sometimes it might be considered a little rude, but it's how I pick up on different languages and, and, and gestures and things and learn about people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense. Um, hmm. listen, uh, boss is, boss is interested, um, in working with, uh, are you both Valars or only one of you? I don't know how that. Okay. I don't know how that worked. Did you take take his last name or? Te- technically speaking, she's the blood, and I'm just the uh, the but, afterthought. But for, we like to marriage. consider our family a whole we are, family. We no are halves. Whole family. No halves. No steps. No in betweens. A quarters. Right. We're one whole family. All right. Well, I mean, steps steps are also very hard for halflings, and he just kind of like sits there with like a very straight look on his face. I mean, sometimes they can be a little hard for me because I'm not really as tall as my dad because, you know, well, you already know. He's six foot three. I'm only five foot three. So I'm, I'm kind of somewhere like on the smaller. You know. We we got a and, and you feel like it like it just a very uh, we got a talker and we got a joke maker boss. I am sorry. Cassian was on. Well, Cassian was both of that. So that makes sense. Uh Anyway, uh, boss is interested. He's willing and happy to work with with the children of Cassian again. Um, well, people who associate themselves with Cassian again. Great company. Um, how how would you guys say about a little little job? Make a little gold while you're while I, you're here adventuring. I think, if you will. I think it would only be fair as if if our father has uh, allowed us to come here under the grace of umber and then like he looks around the entire place just to see if there's like any moving shadows or like because it, it sounds like she's talking to the open air and like addressing uh um, the moment that he does that Fanar's gonna do the same because then she's getting nervous like why is he looking everywhere mm-hmm. so i'm definitely gonna do the same uh Should go ahead we... and give me go ahead and give me perception checks sure uh, and my right. passive perception is 20. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She sees. She sees everything. She's, man. She sees. She sees. Every, yeah. This is not good. I did not like uh, my eyes. Yeah. Uh, that's a nine. A nine. I got a seventeen. A seventeen. A nine and a seventeen. Um. Nothing. Nothing stands out to you. Right. Uh, he goes. Uh, it, we would be incredibly humble. Humble to to work with Umber. Uh. If if it would be. We would be so kind. Oh, why, why are you, why are you saying that? Like, well, you, you're kind of talking as if like he's here, and and if if he's not here, I I don't. The way that, I'm sorry. What job do you have for us? So, um, yes, business. Um, one of our, uh, and she's gonna start to go into detail. But while she starts to go into detail, we are going to transition back to the bar. Um. It's been a few minutes. Kaya just kind of looks at you all, comes back, comes back after um, letting Perrin and uh, Fenara downstairs. Uh, can can I get you anything while we're here, or while you're here? Uh, do you know is uh, there's a tall guy with hair and a shorter guy, like kind of chunky looking, and he talked with like an accent that sounded really funny mm-hmm. um when they had like a big beard do you know those guys because they said that they were gonna help me and i gave them gold to help me find stuff but then they're like i haven't seen them uh kind of stand behind her like messaging uh kaya Kaiden I, I, said that they were cons. You know, um, no, Whatever I haven't seen. That means. I haven't seen anybody that matches that description. But I'll keep a lookout for you. How's that sound? Okay, because if they're being lying, you know my, I guess whatever they are deities said that if you lie, you lose a finger. Okay. Um, I don't 
You keep making faces when I say deity. What is it? De- Am I using the wrong word? Well, I, well, you use the word deity, sweetie, and then you talk about chopping fingers off. So I'm really concerned which deity that is. What? What is de- T- typic- There's a lot. Typically, most when they refer to a deity, they're speaking of a a god that they worship, usually for the betterment of themselves and society in some capacity. I don't really understand that there's there's somebody that those uh, what was somebody that looks after you then? They call themselves my sisters, but they don't think that's the truth. But they kind of worship someone. Um, do you, you may want to uh, just be um aware of all the things you say to all the people around here they're they're not everyone is, is aren't is y'all nice my friends you, though sure absolutely uh speaking you want to be people, friends hmm? are we friends now then okay. i'll be your friend if you're if you if that's okay with you yeah i like that i, I like the little their little friend too i even oh. like kiki so Connor's the best, and I, I like your I like your little your little friend here too. Brim's a sweetheart. He's a little snarky sometimes, and he makes little chitters, but he's he's really fuzzy. So Connor's really fun too. Uh, he likes to eat all the uh, all the extra you know scraps that I that I like to feed him all the time, and also uh, but you, you do have to be careful because every now and then uh, if you uh, if you uh, if if you're rubbing the wrong way, he he kind of gets a little spicy. Oh, uh, Grim does that too, but usually when people look at me funny, Grim gets a little angry looking, and then they run away. This is all riveting. Um, Do Haku. you have... Haku. Yeah, yeah Professor. Uh, have we heard anything on the wizard? Okay. Um, Kev, did you go... Of course he didn't. He was eating all morning. Um, we'll we'll go look. We'll go try to find some more information for you, boss or Please. professor. I'm sorry. Um, we're we're yeah. Uh, and the two of them, she she kind of elbows Keth, and the two of them get off, get up, and they walk out of the tavern. Uh, while that's going on, Hale, you. Uh, Kaiden, you feel something poking, kind of poking at you. Not like on your body, but in your mind. Trying to probe past that, whatever, your, that barrier that you've kind of created for yourself. Um, I will let them ramble and I will sit and kind of just uh, meditates the wrong word but sit and close my eyes and think critically on all the information I currently have gotcha um, and it takes a minute and uh, after about a minute or two of you sitting there thinking about everything that transpires you hear a voice. Are you... What are you trying to accomplish here? You walked in three days ago and have spent your time upstairs studying and learning, trying to contact that wizard. What are you after? Don't answer. Yes, you can answer. Well, that's what I'm looking for. Oh. An answer. To one of many questions. Not for me, but for him. I just run logistics, and this seems like the most obvious choice. Another kind of minute goes by. Why don't you bring the other two downstairs? Tokaya 
the boss said. It's all right. I know enough about them anyway. And I am out of character. I am aware of the boss, right? I've heard at least you've you've heard enough of like the boss. You haven't heard a name. Well, now you've you've known enough to like Umber is apparently the boss. Like you can put you're smart enough to put two and two together. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so he'll kind of snap away. Um, Art Eden. Hmm? Um. You want to see something cool? Mm-hmm. Follow me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and he'll just sort of make off in the direction that he saw them go. Okay. So you head in and, and the whole time, Kaya, like, you just beeline it into behind, like, behind the bar, into the back room, flip open the hatch, um, being the only real sort of, or point of uh, egress that you can go at this point. And it's clearly like right there, you walk in, like there's no hiding it uh, or nothing. And the whole time Kai's like, uh, you, you shouldn't go. Um, no, no, just keep walking. And the three of you, Eden and Art, do you follow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. The two of you, or the three of you make your way down. And even as you're coming down, Kai is like walking at, like running, like nipping you guys at your heels. Saying, you can't go up the door in front of you is kind of like half cracked open. You can hear. That's it. okay. Oh, he's gonna show us something cool. Uh, but <laughs> hang on, hang, hang on. Uh, and Art's gonna run on back, pick up to a car, make his way back. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait, and then I'll I'll proceed to open the door. Uh, you push the door open, and you can see sitting around uh, this bigger kind of meeting table, uh, Perrin and Finn, uh, in mid conversation with uh, this woman clad in leather armor scruff kind of on her face like fur on her face hair kind of how i described earlier um parted to one side and she's like messing with it and the door opens and she sees the three of you and kai in the back like i i tried to they wouldn't listen it we were summoned i uh we're gonna see something cool yeah the professor's gonna teach us something and and uh, and Perrin turns to Appa. Are, are, are we, are we gonna see something cool? And he t- like tilts his head. Oh no! Uh, have a seat. Let me continue to explain. Uh, this uh, this shop that apparently all five of you are now going on. What's a, a job? I don't I don't make the rules here. Don't look at me. I oh, just. Uh, that's good. I was looking for a job. That was easy. You, he didn't even... You, you know... To, hey, um, Blue. And she points at Fenara. Take take notes. Goblin, uh, like, uh, just, just uh, was like... Oh, okay. No. <sighs> uh, put the paper down. No, just, like, visually, just... Nah. Uh, oh, what? oh, um, like, so like you did want note. me to write in, in my, my book, like, you just want me to try to remember, okay. <sighs> Parent that wasn't smiles really, at you said make notes, so. And, and she, like, to... she rubs her eyes for a second, and these are Cassian's kids, oh my god. It's, they're, we're eclectic, but capable. I, I, I would also encourage you to be specific. But which ones are Cassian's? Yeah, that one is Cassian's kid. You're t- technically not. I mean, you are. And she, he, as she's saying that, she like her eyes dart it, immediately, Fanara, Fanara, immediately like, to Fanara. And she's like, <laughs> immediately to Fanara. And Fanara's she does that kind of like not squint. I, it's not what I meant. Not the what smile, I meant. the smile on Perrin's face is a mile wide, knowing how big of a mess this is becoming. <laughs> All right. Does, does the job have anything to do with genealogy? Otherwise, let's get on with it. What? No, it does not. Um. Thank you, Professor. Uh, that's that's your title, right? You go by Professor, Doctor, Professor, Kiki. Professor K- Kiki. Is that? Nope. A, that... I thought it was Kaden. Nope, not a thing. All right. Um, Kaden. 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 Oh, Professor I'm Kiki. Sorry. Professor. Wow, Logan just got like brain assaulted by <laughs> so many different things, and I'm just sitting here like, well, fuck me. Uh, <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> 
chaos. Hey, Great. To the um, party. Um, wish, wish Warlock, you're taking notes, right? I'm going to need those later. Uh, it um, just says chaos for three says, hours. <laughs> yeah. um, please, please have a seat. Um, okay, so. Um, a couple days ago, um, we received news that one of our storage facilities um, would potentially be attacked. Um, we moved most of the valuable resources out of it. However, we weren't able to prevent a majority of our trade goods uh, and our raw materials that we usually ship northward to Shymore and into the heart of Cantor. Um, they're, they're lost. The, the building was lost. Um, we sent a couple individuals uh, to, to go check it out. Um, only one has made it back and is, isn't really in a good place physically. Um, she got beat up pretty bad. Um, the location, um, our, our warehouse is in, uh, is in Little Skig which is a small community next to the uh, the wharf, which is called Tafub Wharf. Um, everything in there currently is designated high-value cargo um, and should be retrieved or saved or worst-case scenario. Worst-case scenario, Goblin. Repeat after me. Worst. First case, case scenario, scenario. They should be destroyed. I would have said that. Yeah, I know. I'm regretting these words right now. What is it? You don't open it. You don't ask questions. You go. You retrieve. You come well, back. Well, if it's if it's something that needs to be destroyed, it's probably good for us to know what it is so that we know how to properly destroy it, right? I, well, it hold on a second. To... It's, it's not, it's not, it needs to be destroyed under the very finite circumstances that that is the only way that we can prevent this thing from getting into other people's hands. Oh, well, That's... for sure, but absolutely. But if we're going to know how to destroy it, we need to know what it is. That's actually a really good point fire will do the trick pretty I'm standard less... pretty easy I'm most less combustible as i'm sorry i'm less concerned with the product that we may or may not have to destroy and more concerned with the people who would want to get it what do we know of the culprits uh it's one of um well a couple people but the people that we think are are responsible for it um are essentially a rival trade organization um they don't deal with our sort of product, so I don't understand why they're after it. Um, Umber doesn't seem to know quite either, uh, but they're there. That's we don't really have a whole lot of information. It happened kind of we had we had maybe a couple of days' notice, and we tried to get ahead of it, and it wasn't very fast. Uh, they have uh, typical manpower. They have less actually more manpower than we do so hence why we're looking for outside hires um but it shouldn't be anything other than your standard fare kind of run of the mill thugs and bullies uh, uh, run of the mill thugs um I, and then I'm, I'm Finn sorry. looks at uh <laughs> Finn looks at Perrin like what in the I, I, you, you're going to have to excuse us. We don't exactly running of the mill uh, is not something that we put the word thugs into. That's a new concept, uh, actually. Like, are we talking about the kind of thugs that stab you, uh, sta slit your throat, stab you, slit your throat, beat you? Um... Huh. And you call that run of the mill? That seems like some high stakes trading right there. Hey, you, you've I seen, don't... you've seen the city, right? Like it's not a very. Well, I mean, I, 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 we just figured that this was just a small area, and perhaps you know, 
I, it may be lesser than great, uh, but I, we didn't want to pass judgment on a, on somewhere just because yeah. of the we, way we that it looks. We were taught better. We were raised to not judge a book by its cover until you get to know the inside of said book. But trust me, she has read mm. some pretty ragged books. You threw up all over the inside of this book. Well, uh, again, I can't control the inner workings of my intestinal system. Sometimes, you know, you're just more sensitive. Um, I, I, I was. I'm sorry for that. I didn't mean to okay. do the thing. The parent turns to Kaiden and go, "Oh, Professor, you have to forgive her. She just, she's very sensitive." It's, it's. Oh, that was so these sarcasm! Are the, Darn it! So oh. these are the humans that have like the sharp teeth and are like the evil ones. No, we none of us have any idea what you're talking about there. Listen, we'll take. Uh, I don't throw myself at danger willingly, but in exchange for the information that I was promised, I would do it. But I would like to hear what the others would have to say because they seem quite capable despite this don't I yeah I, I would complete that thought there professor um my sister and I will be more than happy to help you no. how much does it pay pay Each of you will receive um, really that much. Right, if you say uh, fifty gold pieces a piece. Do I not... hear the voice when um... they talk? No, you do not. <laughs> okay. Eden like leans over to like whoever is sitting next to her. It would be like I guess Art, <laughs> and she's just. Is 50 a lot? Well, uh... It can, it can buy you some things. It, it, it's, 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 it's not bad. Aaron, don't you make more than that by just playing your... I... We, we're not... Loop? We're not going to talk about that right now. Uh, well, uh, it's not very well, much, is it? For, that, you know, if we're going to get stabbed or something. Uh, uh, right. If we, we, I've got to uh, remember that this place does not see the kind of um, the, the kind of rapport that we're used to. Oh, so that's we yes, 50, 50 gold sounds just fine. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, we want gold, nice. right? Yeah, we, we I don't definitely care about gold. The gold. Just give me the information. I'll uh, take his uh, gold. Uh, who are you talking to? Uh, that's for me to know right now and do you potentially find out if you you do a good job here i talk to people too okay you do i talk to you oh well yeah okay there yeah anything you find while you're there that is not direct property of the scar harriers Perrin leans in closer Anything you find that isn't direct property of the Scar Harriers is fair game. Pardon? Got a logo for that. Uh, it'll be mostly the stuff in the crates. All right. Anything not in a crate. I'll remember that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Those got out before. We, we, we took those out before. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. Anything not in the crate? I'm not always the most aware person, but I kind of feel like there's stuff you're not saying. Yes, I have to agree with Miss Eden on this one. I think there's some information that we might, we might need to be privy to. Just a little bit. Again, Perrin's smile is a mile wide. Just this whole thing is a fucking mess and he loves it uh and he looks at he looks at uh uh Alpha and just kind of right and i wouldn't be mistaken to say that 
there's a reason why we're not being pri made privy to certain information and that the information that we are being offered is strictly the need to know information. Would I would I be right in saying that? You're right. That That's a correct answer. Yes. And he turns to Fenara and Eden. If there's if there were anything else that was important, and then he turns back to Afa, and if we find anything else that's important, and she, then he turns back to the girls, we'll we'll be compensated for it. Don't you worry. And then he turns, and then like the eyes are kind of like that wide, slightly psychotic sort of right. Oh, I know that look. Is this uh you. is this is this negotiating? Is this is that what I'm seeing right here? She just gives you a nod. Okay. He, and, and then for a moment he's like, "Oh, that's that's it." And he turns to Finara. "That's the look. That's that's what he keeps trying to Now I get it. I get it. Right. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm, uh, I I got it. See, that now you understand. Blue, you want you wanted to you, you got that that itch, right? Uh, um, that's correct. I, I think your brother would agree with me. This is how you scratch it, or at least start to. <laughs> right? Yeah. They make herbs for itches, you know. It... Well, this is a different <laughs> kind of itch. I can tell you later after after said dealings. We can we can talk about it on our way. Yes. I don't. I think this stuff you're supposed to keep to yourself. You're not supposed to tell people if you're all itchy. It's kind of inappropriate. There is well, a lot. I of stuff remember I touched this plant this one yourself. time that made me all itchy. Get out. Go. Go. Okay. If you need I, anything before you leave, talk to Kaya. Uh, thank. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Boss. He's already gone. Uh, Stop, Paris. He's not here. Umber is not here. Stops talking oh. like he's here. He's not here. No, no, I, no, no. I'm, I'm talking to you, the person apparently in his chair. Oh, and he just kind of turns you. on his heel and like walks out the door. You, you see a little bit of like the fur, kind of the fur blushes a little. Um, and then Fanara, like seeing that, she's gonna do like some type of weird salute, and then she's gonna like pick up her dress and like try to follow like Perrin <laughs> on his heels. Art's gonna hold up Tulkar, make Tulkar give a little bow, and then give a little bow himself, and then scamper out of the room. You do. Kaiden will raise up and lean over the desk. I expect the information to be worthy of my time. And I'll turn and walk before they say anything. Are, are you gonna... you gonna go? Pink. Come on, Eden. Pink, pink, little floofy thing. Oh, she's already. She walked out immediately. Oh, did she? Okay. I was like, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was, I was like, I thought Eden was just sitting. I thought just Eden was sitting there. I was like, <laughs> oh, as soon as she said get out, like Eden was like, okay, and just got up and walked out. <laughs> just like, and like is already like in back in the bar. Like she is long gone. As the uh, professor. Uh, makes their way out of the room. Uh, Art's gonna uh, match pace with them. You seem to be very interested in whatever this information is. What, what, what information are you looking for? Heron holds up a hand. Uh, let's worry about what we need to focus on. It's going to get whatever it is that Umber needs. And he looks over at the professor. Need to know basis. Let's keep it at that, right? Absolutely. So oh, okay. let's clarify I'll... something real quick because I feel like this is going to be a problem. So what actually, what what name do you prefer? Because there was about five different options that was thrown about in the room. And just so I know. What's your, what's your dad's name? Uh, Castian, Castian Villar. And... You would also maybe call him dad. Yes, uh, he's my father, of course. My name is Professor Kaiden Hale. Pick any one of the three, and it works. Fuck 
Loki. And then Finn is going to point, Fenara is going to point at uh, Eden, it yelling did, that out. Like, and he like le leans, like pair leans back on like the foot rest of a stool. Cookie, that sounds like a right interesting name for you. Cookie, I like that. And he just like walks over to Kaya. Your name just sounds so serious and it doesn't match you. Call me Hale. All right. Mm. No. <laughs> uh, Kaya. Yes. I... I'm going to need um, a map, if you've got one, because uh, we've got to go and pick up some property, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, of the, the, the city, I would imagine, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you'd be so kind as to provide me a map and tell me uh, where you're going, tell me what you, where 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 we need to go. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, I'll have to. We don't have a lot of paper here. It'll it'll take me a few minutes, but I can I can get one for you. Um, and she heads back, starts to head. Anything else while I'm grabbing supplies? Here, no. hold on. And I'll just take, uh, he'll see him reach over to uh, a different book on his right hip. And it looks like a, a damn uh, coloring book. Like it's just, it's just trash with papers hanging out and stuff like that. And he'll kind of open it up gently and like pull out a piece of paper that's hanging. It'll be clean. And there you go. You just use that. All right. Um, and instead of like drawing you a physical map, she instead kind of does like the Google Maps writing it out like directions of like go here go there go here um and hands it back and i mean you, you just it's kind of once you get into the main thoroughfare you just go down to the wharf and then it's a little bit east of the wharf but uh, i mean directions right here um alley by alley pretty much um should should get you there pretty quick takes the paper puts it over his shoulder waits for someone to take it from him thank you kaya it's been a pleasure. Same. Same. In Thank you right. for for really. It was really good. <laughs> how, how my, that was legit how my mind has been this entire three hours. <laughs> no. Uh, go ahead, uh, Fenara. And then Art. Well, I'm sorry for interrupting, um, Mr. Art, sir. Um, just, oh, again, uh, my apologies for uh, my rude entrance and spelling of my and uh, I promise next time uh, I come back that won't be happening again I hope I uh, just don't get on a boat I guess would be the best you know all right last piece of advice before you leave how old are you me yeah Fenar yeah fin oh I'm 18 and a half Congratulations. Uh, when you're on a boat, one thing that my dad... And I'm surprised your dad... Hmm, I'm really surprised well, your dad didn't teach you this. I, but. To be fair, I'd forgotten the herbs that I normally pack in order to fix that problem. That was my mistake. I was I was busy making gifts for family before I left, and I got a little... Yeah. Well, a good remedy that your father should know, since he spent a lot of time on sea is that if you put a little bit of alcohol in your drink, get just that not full-blown, like, smashed, but just get a little bit tipsy. It, You know that sway you get when you're on your boat, on a boat? It negates, oh, it negates it's that. it's awful. It's god-awful. Yeah, I but, really don't but when, you, when you get a little tipsy, you mm. start to sway along with the waves in the boat. So that would be my, my tip for you. If you're ever on a boat, just get a little bit of alcohol. Now, does it matter the type of alcohol? No. Well, then I guess no. you're covered there. Oh, this is a test. Yes. Kaya, and then uh, I'm going to yes. hand, hand her a silver for my room tonight. It, it, sure. She just pockets it. It was on the house anyway, but tips it. I'll make sure it goes to the boss. 
Anything else I can do for you? No? All right. Um, and then, then Perrin just like, kind of goes, goes, puts his puts his arms up. And goes all right. So and he's, at this point he's looking at the ground and sees that everyone but Hale is barefoot. And he goes, looks back up at Hale. It it must be incredibly endearing for you to be the sore thumb, isn't it? Because you're kind of uh, suited and booted, as it were. Yeah, don't... Uh... His shirt isn't booted. <laughs> That's oh, I very just realized observant. he's not wearing a shirt. Oh. Let's just go. And then she kind of like <laughs> blushes a little bit when she realizes that he's not wearing a shirt because she didn't realize it this whole time. Underneath. He thinks nothing of it. No. <laughs> Is that not normal? Just... It's uh, lighter that way. Oh. oh. And uh, that's why you lost the arm wrestling. It's too heavy. Okay. And then Finn... he's just ready to walk outside. Before <laughs> yep. they move, though, Finn is going to look down because when he pointed out the fact that everybody's feet were bare except for Hale's, she looks at everybody's feet and then she looks specifically, she lingers on Art's feet. Oh, I'm really glad you have all your toes. And that's all she says to Art. <laughs> he, Perrin puts an arm, a uh, hand on uh, Art's back. No, I, she says some very strange things. Oh, don't, don't. I'm really glad because, you know, it could be without some toes and can you imagine it going on a mission like this against some some stabby stabby um run of the mill thugs without all of your toes I and he le- that being pretty hard he leans yeah. in leans into art like i said she says some very strange things that doesn't even make my top five for the day Oh, speaking, that reminds me. And um, Art's going to go back into one of his pockets and pull out uh, that flask that he had earlier and uncork it. Uh, do you have a Do you have a cup of some sort? To uh, Ky- uh Ky- Kyla was it? Kyla, the barkeep. Ky- Kaya. 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 Yeah. She. Uh. Yeah. She. Put how big of a cup? Uh, oh, this is a small one's fine. This, this is a gift. Okay. Puts a shot glass on the the counter. Here you go. And. And is going to pour out the contents of the flask, which is a uh, clear liquid that has a kind of a potent smell to it. Uh, I, I, from what I understand, this this is really good for cleaning. If if you need help with that 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 from earlier, this might help with that. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. I'll find. Uh, she takes like a moonshine, like an empty uh, like moonshine type of glass, and pours the it in there, and then seals it back up. Um, thank you. Uh, as, the... as that transfer is made, it has a very sour, pungent smell. Art, can you read Gnomish? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can. Okay. When are we leaving? No. Eden's already I've been okay. waiting <laughs> on you guys. You guys keep dilly-dallying this whole time. Sure. And, then, yep. you know, I've just been waiting here for y'all. Uh, Perrin, uh, immediately, uh, climbs up his sister's leg and get, like, wraps his arms around, uh, underneath her chin. All right, let's go. And he's gonna take a piggyback ride. All right. Well, let's get going. And as you all head out the door of Le Imite, that's where we're going to call it for tonight. Woo! Thank you all for joining. We're gonna do one... Oh, as I'm setting up, uh, we're going to do, yeah, I, I'm the um, dicey things. Um, one last time, converge in chat to enter to win a set of Umbral Oculus dice. We're going to go around the circle one more time. Everybody do your, your shtick. Um, and, uh, yeah. All right. Okay, fine. 
Taryn. Hi, everybody. I'm Taryn, also known as Val Rook across the socials. I am a generally creative human eldritch entity and TTRPG performer, uh, as well as a GM over on the Initiative Order, where I run a horror cult divinity lost homebrew campaign, where I peel back the veil and shatter reality for my players. Uh, every Monday, I'm also on the Initiative Order playing Peggy Sue James in Vault, our Fallout TTRPG. You will continue to catch me here. Um, and then again, I am the creative behind Umbral Oculus Dice. That's UO underscore Dice on Instagram. Link in bio for the shop, merch, and other stuff. And proud sponsor. Heck yeah. Free. Uh, yes. Good to email. Well, thank y'all for tuning in. We really appreciate all the love and support. Uh, I'm uh, Utsihime. You can find me at Utsihime Cosplay on Facebook, Instagram, here on Twitch, where I occasionally stream a variety of games. And Brianna DeCoster on Twitter. I'm a cosplayer, streamer, and uh, TTRPG performer on the Initiative Order and here and other places, too, coming up. Uh, so if you want to see all those updates on what I'm up to, please be sure to check out my, my socials of the medias. And uh, have a wonderful rest of your week, everyone. Ronan. Hey, uh, Ronan Fox. Uh, you can find me at Ronan Fox on all the socials. Uh, D&D content creator will be back on Twitch starting in October. So we build like community D&D adventures and world build for my homebrew setting of Valandrica. So, and then you can catch me here and on Tiao in the aforementioned Far Realms getting the crap scared out of me every other Sunday. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Eddie. Hi everyone, I'm Eddie, otherwise known on all the various social medias as Discount Bard. You can find me there at Discount Bard, and I'm also primarily here on uh, Twitch. I do a lot of video game streaming, variety stuff. Speaking of getting the crap scared out of you, I am actually working my way towards building the roster for this coming October, where I'm doing spooky game streams. So Yay. there's another opportunity my favorite. to see <laughs> me getting the crap so scared out of me. <laughs> Best. I love but, watching Eddie scream. It, 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 it's quite a lot of fun, and people seem to get a kick out of hearing me uh, scream my heart out. Uh, but beyond that, I am also a TTRPG performer. You can find me floating around various channels like this one, where I get to bring fun characters to life and love that so much. I'm also slowly working my way towards becoming a DM myself. That's still kind of been a long, ongoing project that hasn't come to fruition just yet, but I am working towards that goal. It will be coming in the next uh, couple of months or so. And last but not least, Renee. Thank you all for coming out this evening and watching our lovely premiere episode. We look forward to having you here on DM underscore screening every other Tuesday um, for our wonderful chaos party that we have created here. Uh, my name is Renee Beauregard. You can find me at Dragon Rock RPG on Twitter at Dragon Rock RPG Design on Instagram, where me and my compatriot, comrade, compadre, best friend of all time uh daniel lieberman and i we create 5e supplements for dungeons and dragons coming down the pipeline is something slightly eldritch so if that's your fancy then we have something for you um keep an eye on our social medias for that and uh thank you all for uh coming out again and supporting us uh make sure you give all of my friends here a follow uh and tell them uh and tell us what you liked about this uh this episode you can tweet at dm underscore screening uh to let us know what you liked about tonight's episode we'd love to hear it uh thanks again guys and our winner Hey, Ink and Ignorance. Yay! Congratulations. Click the link uh, in my link tree. Go to, oh, you're already in my Discord. I don't know what I'm saying. Yep. Contact me. I'll get your information. I'll pass it along to Taryn. Uh, and you'll get a wonderfully beautiful set of Umbra Oculus dice. Um, one last time, I'm Logan Hanley, DM underscore screening, your friendly internet dungeon master. I have some more stuff coming up later this week. Um... The VOD, for those of you who are on YouTube watching... Oh, wait. For those of you who may have caught the end of this, or the beginning of this, or whatever, the VOD will be up hopefully tomorrow. If not, then for sure Thursday. Uh, the goal is to have it up every Thursday before I stream. Um, and then, uh, yeah, next stream for me is Thursday. But other than that, thank you for watching. Happy adventures. We're going to raid our friends over at Weave the Tale, uh, who are streaming, it looks like, the Dune ttrpg Ooh. um which nice. i didn't even know was a thing so we're gonna go check them out thank you all for watching um and until next time happy adventuring bye guys <laughs>